Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's special meeting of the town council. We have one item on today's agenda, which is our strategic priority setting, which we do um, every year to look at our priorities to help guide our work for the next two years. So before we begin, if we could just begin with roll call. Thank you and good evening. Council member Risto. Present. Council member Hudis. Here. Council member Badami. Here. Vice Mayor Rennie. Here. Mayor and Chair Jen um, Syok, excuse me. Here, thank you. And uh, before we begin, as I mentioned, we have one item on our agenda, which is our strategic priorities, which is pretty broad, but we also have an opportunity for people to speak about things that are not necessarily related to priority setting for tonight's agenda. Excuse and me, so, Mayor, it's a special it, meeting, so they have to speak only on items on the agenda. Ah, okay, so we don't have verbal communications then. For items on the agenda, for not for items not on the agenda because it's a special meeting. Got it. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do then is uh, I'm going to just ask. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm still waiting for a town manager, but uh, just council members. I think what I'd like to do right now is is give uh, council members as well as our attendees an op, uh, just a preview of how I would like to run tonight's meeting. I think that might be helpful for you to start thinking about. Uh, we will have a staff report. You have your staff packet that lists the various ideas that have come forward. Um, on our staff report, it, similar to what we did at our last meeting, there's four areas that we I would like for us to consider the first being affirmation of our town goals and then the second into priorities and then the four, second and third is priorities and then fourth is the ordinance priorities. As you start to think about these and as you start to hear your our public speakers, if you could first give some thought about affirm, affirming the, the town goals and then second and third B and C will combine that discussion together. And then D, um, we can start talking about the ordinances, priorities, and seeing if, if there's agreement, and if not agreement, how we may want to reprioritize that. So, so that's kind of where I'm going, and I hope that helps guide your own thought process as you listen to public comments and provide feedback. But for now, um, what I'd like to do, and for the speakers, we after we have the staff report, I will open that up for, for comments. So that will be also the time for people to share um, their thoughts on what has been presented in the staff report. Okay. Okay. With that, um, Ms. Prevetti. Thank you. And good evening, everyone. And welcome to our uh, annual priority setting session. Um, this evening, we are pleased to present to you some longstanding priorities that the council has been working on for the last several years. And they are rooted in core goals that have served the town very well. Those goals are community character, good governance, fiscal stability, quality public infrastructure, civil enrichment, and public safety. Um, with these goals, um, the council has acknowledged that we've got many long-term issues that really are not, not going to need uh, quick fixes, but really every year we need to kind of chip away and continue to make investments in these areas. And they are safety, and that includes emergency preparedness and fire protection. And as you saw, we did a community survey in late 2020 and early 2021 and fire protection was the number two priority of the Los Gatos community who participated in the survey. Quality of life is another really important theme. And this is where community vitality comes in and all of our hard work around COVID economic recovery, as the council discussed last week, falls into this area, as well as economic vitality and land use planning. We've got our general plan update underway and in 2021, we expect to get started on our housing element, which is also required by state law. 
Our third main theme is traffic and transportation. As you all know, um, traffic has been an ongoing concern and we've been making really big strides on trying to create complete streets here in Los Gatos so that all modes of travel are safe and comfortable and attractive. And we're gonna continue those investments. And then we've also been implementing, beginning to implement our comprehensive parking study with the two, first two recommendations uh, in progress. And staff can give you more details if you're interested. One of those is wayfinding signs, which we've heard quite a bit about as well as figuring out an employee parking uh, permit program so that way those who work downtown have um, easy access to transportation. And then finally, prudent fiscal management is really an important goal. The town council has been very forward thinking to make sure that we are prepared for economic downturns and that we are taking strides to make sure we're managing and uh, really investing in our pension and other post-employment uh, obligations. Uh, we've made great progress with respect to the sale and lease of town properties, and we hope to continue that. So really this year, given our challenges, uh, expected uh, limitations with uh, town revenues, as we will be discussing later in February with the mid-year budget report and five-year forecast, we aren't really, we aren't talking about how we allocate a surplus this time around. What, instead, what we are asking council to do is affirm or refine the existing priorities and really continue the work that's in progress around inclusion, our police reforms, pandemic recovery, regional transportation, and of course the general plan and related policies. Uh, staff uh, from all departments are available uh, for your conversation this evening. So as, um, as questions come up, or if the council would like to hear more about what particular town boards, committees and commissions are working on and how they align with these priorities, staff is prepared to answer and address those issues. In addition, tonight you will be prioritizing the town attorney's list of proposed ordinances. They are in a priority order, order as determined by the attorney in consultation with all town departments. So that way you have a starting point. Um, and uh, again, we're really uh, looking for your guidance because uh, ordinance work uh, affects all of the town departments and we wanna make sure we're putting our resources where you would like us uh, to emphasize. And with that, Mayor, um, I just open it up for your guidance. Uh, any questions? There was a desk item tonight with public comments as well as responses to two comments and questions that we received from council members. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Manager Provetti. Um, I do have one question and then I will open it up to other council members. I think it would be helpful for um, for new council members and reminders for the vice mayor and myself, as well as those in attendance, the, the process of how our calendar works. We are setting the high level priorities tonight, but if you could just work through how that then goes back to staff and how that interplays with the um, specific work plans that the departments have, as well as the budget that will be coming back based on tonight's conversation. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if we have the diagram at hand, but in the past we've you and we'll, you will see this diagram on Thursday for our other joint study session. Uh, but typically tonight, you are essentially uh, setting the priorities so that way we know how to build a budget for you for your consideration in May. So that is um, uh, when we have a public hearing on the budget. In addition, um, with the operating budget, which is our day-to-day -day services, we also do a capital improvement budget. So we wanna make sure again, that we are looking at uh, priorities that really uh, reflect the council's um, needs. So uh, if we could just zoom in a little bit more, um, thank you, Arn, for putting this up. This is our annual budget CAFR cycle. And as I say, we'll go into more detail on this on Thursday night uh, with our joint commission, but essentially identifying priorities really feeds into then building the budget uh, for the for the next fiscal year, as well as helping all of our boards, committees, and commissions with their work plans um, and making sure that we're all in alignment 
with this. So you can see that um, you know we're in the January box where we're setting the uh, strategic priorities. We'll be doing the budget discussion with the five-year forecast on February uh, 16th. So you'll have uh, that, that discussion um, next month. But really understanding your policy priorities also helps us prepare uh, for that five-year forecast. Thank you. I think, Mayor, you may be on mute. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and so I open it up for questions from council members. And then after that, I will open it up for attendees to speak. Go. Yes, council member, he does. So. Uh, thank you. Um, since this is my first time in this, uh, there are a couple things I'm not quite sure about and I'm wondering if um, I could maybe better understand and I'm sure that probably the public might be interested in as well. So, you know, in the report um, on page nine, there's a document that says strategic priorities FY 2020 to 2022. And then on page 19, there's one that is FY 2021 to 2023. Um, could you maybe help me understand how these, um, you know, which which actually overlap each other in time, um, how how to use these? And you know, obviously, I see some things on one that I don't see on the other, but I see you know eighty percent the same on them. So could could you maybe just help orient me? Uh, uh, if, if possible, some, someone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So attachment one are the priorities that the previous council approved last January. So I wanted, we wanted to provide to the town council and to our public the context of where we were a year ago. And so as you can see, a lot of the ongoing priorities are the same as in uh, the later attachment which is attachment uh, three. Um, but really what's different is that this year we are not proposing any new priorities. Instead, we are uh, emphasizing what is currently in progress, some of our recently completed items. Um, and then, but you'll see those ongoing priorities are essentially the same with maybe a few uh, word changes uh, and uh, updates for the 21-23 period. And we do a two-year priority look uh, because, you know, ag again, many of these projects overlap fiscal years, sometimes they're multi-year efforts, and it just really helps for our planning to kind of take that a slightly longer term view. You know, clearly with COVID, we did not see that coming. We had to pivot very quickly. But I have to say, I'm very proud of the staff team to continue to make progress on the other priorities that had absolutely nothing to do with the pandemic. So for example, vehicle miles traveled, we made progress on the general plan, et cetera. So, um, so really the two documents are very similar. The only real change is that for this next period, we are not suggesting any ads due to uh, staff time limitations and budgetary uh, limitations. Thank you. Th thank you. Yes, Council Member Badami. Thank you, Ms. Prevetti. So just for clarification, you're not proposing any new priorities for us to recommend. However, we're free or you would welcome us to expand on our existing priorities maybe by not only expanding, but refining them. That is correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Vice Mayor. Um, so on our, the, the second, the 21 to 23, um, under in progress, it says inclusive, inclusive community efforts. And we had one, um, uh, item in our desk desk item requesting um, a committee on 
inclusive, inclusivity, diversity, equity. Does the inclusivity community efforts include that? And I, I think it goes to sort of a bigger picture. We also have had people asking for a sustainability committee and is our is our fire committee wildfire committee continuing also and you know what is what, what's our bandwidth for for these are extra committees beyond what we normally do and you know the six years i've been on the council we might do one extra committee at a time and we have our general plan committee still going for another six months so really i'm i i you know these are all great things but how much can we do yeah, uh, thank you so much, Vice Mayor. And that um, was addressed a little bit in the desk item, but thank you for, for asking. So first of all, the Wildfire Ad Hoc Committee concluded its work in early December, 2020. So that committee is no longer in effect. Their, their work is completed. Um, we, of course, there's, there's a lot of interest in implementing the committee's report. Um, and we will, we hope to continue our efforts around vegetation management and other things um, in order to really protect the Los Gatos community from the potential threat of wildfire. Uh, as part of the inclusive community uh, work, we are not proposing a new committee of, of effort. Uh, instead, it's very likely that we will continue the community conversations in some form. Uh, the mayor and I have just begun to talk about how those might take shape for 2021, uh, but no decisions have been made. Uh, Vice Mayor, you're absolutely correct. Uh, new committees uh, take a fair amount of staff time. And I know how wonderful our volunteers are and how they wanna do all the work. Uh, but quite frankly, we have legal obligations to make sure that those committees are run consistent with town laws as well as state laws. And so we spend a fair amount of time administering those committees, as well as reviewing and making sure that the substance of what they're working on is consistent with town policies and laws. Uh, so um, by creating committees that is extra workload, and I just don't see um, us having the capacity to do that, especially if we're gonna set up a, a housing element committee this year, um, on top of the general plan, uh, so that would be yet, you know, yet another new, new committee uh, for for uh, future consideration. But I, having said that, I think the opportunities for community engagement are tremendous, and to the extent that some of these work efforts become part of the work of our boards and commissions, I would really encourage our community to engage with us. For example, inclusivity, diversity, and equity should really be something that all of our commissions think about and work on for 2021. I don't wanna pretend that I know exactly what shape that might take, um, but again, under the mayor's leadership, um, I think we might be able to define that a little bit more this evening. Uh, so rather than setting up a new committee, maybe we we look at how do we leverage uh, the partnerships that we have already. And um, Mayor, I, I apologize if I've overstepped my bounds, but I um, I also want to make sure that you have an opportunity to to address this topic. No, thank you, Town Manager. You said it quite eloquently. Um, and also just a preview for council members as well as any of our commissioners that are in attendance. We are setting up uh, on this calendar a joint meeting for all of our commissions with the council so that we will not only have an opportunity to talk about strategic priorities, the work that those individual commissions are doing, but issues such as these, what DEI lens are they now looking at their work at? Um, I know that many organizations and nonprofits are starting to to look at the work they're doing through that lens. And there's opportunities, not only through a DEI lens, there's a sustainability lens. And, and so I wanna give that as more seeds for you to consider as you think about the upcoming calendar year and opportunities to engage with our commissions and our public um, in, in, in different ways uh, and reimagining how we have our existing commissions and the work that they're doing. Yes, Council Member Risto. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I was thinking about the same thing because 
having sat on um, a couple of commissions in the past, the BPAC and the Transportation and Parking Commission, which then became combined and became Complete Streets, what we did each year is was as a commission, as we set our priorities, we looked at the town's strategic priorities. And so I'm wondering like, if we can make sure that as each of our commissions moves forward, how can we push this, not push it out. I mean, in the past there have been council assigned priorities to commissions, but you know, how can we in, encourage our commissions to make sure that they look at what the town's strategic priorities are so that they are moving forward where the town has decided we need to go. And of course the commissions probably have extra bandwidth to pursue a couple of other things, but um, I'm wondering about that. Like how can, what mechanism do we have? And Laurel, I don't mean to steal your thunder and I'm sure you'll follow on my um, lead, but we have an opportunity having all the department heads here today who are also staff liaisons to all these commissions. And um, and I know this is something, again, that uh, hopefully Laurel can speak a little bit about, is staff is responsible now for implementing and executing the priorities that we set tonight. And so the work plans that they come back with through their commissions, as well as the budget, will hopefully reflect the priorities that we set tonight. But I will let Laurel speak to that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor, and thank you, uh, Council Member Risto. I don't know if I have much more to say. I think this is always an important night that our commissions really look forward to uh, because they're always wanting to make sure that the work they do are, are, is valued in your eyes and that it is uh, lining up with the, with the current pri uh, priorities. And of course, we're in a very dynamic environment. So we do want to make sure that we're addressing those long-term issues while also addressing the immediate needs of our community. So we, we look forward to, to your guidance this evening. Any other questions? Yes, Vice Mayor. I, I guess I really want to ask the same question kind of along the uh, in, you know, we have also in in progress, the environmental sustainability and climate resiliency item. And so that means you're already doing something. What I'm trying to understand is if we kind of don't say much about it, will will something happen during the year or do we need to say this has got to be a high priority you got we got a lot of things on this table and if they're on the table we know you're going to work on them some but how do we know how much you're going to work on them um it, it you know is it going to be based on us say well you you know we need to put this one in bold now kind of thing and um and, and so that's part of the question and but more specifically what's really going to happen on on that that particular item that says in progress or do we need to emphasize it some more to make more happen? Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, for the question. I think I'll I'll start, and then um, Director Morley and perhaps Director Paulson will also weigh in. So, uh, the council has longstanding commitment to environmental sustainability. I think um, our beautiful natural resources are a tremendous asset to this town. We were really in the forefront of banning plastic bags and styrofoam, uh, banning gas leaf blowers. Um, you know, we've been we've been really committed to reducing our greenhouse gas emissions and footprint um, here in Los Gatos. And now that we're updating the general plan, we do have a sustainability element uh, that will have goals and policies and programs as well. In addition, Director Morley is in charge of town facilities. And so we're looking at how do we lead by example in terms of how we manage our, uh, our facilities in terms of energy use, water use, as you recall, we just did a major capital upgrade to reduce energy consumption in all town facilities. And there are other things that are underway. But um, if I may, Mayor, uh, if I could just ask Director Morley maybe to comment on a few things that he sees it for uh, this, this year, um, and then also Director Paulson, and then uh, if each director could also indicate where and what kind of emphasis would be helpful or refinements would be helpful to you with your work um, on these efforts. So that way council's input can be uh, most most useful this evening. Thank you. Good evening, Matt Morley, Director of Parks and Public Works. 
So the environmental sustainability and climate resiliency category is fairly broad, as you know, and a lot of what we do actually rolls up to it. So you'll see us doing work that, um, that could fall in this category throughout the year. Um, our work with uh, Silicon Valley Clean Energy, which, uh, for which you'll see uh, a report card uh, this Friday in the manager's memo is an example of work that we've done in the past uh, where we've had good success. Uh, the town manager mentioned a bunch of other areas where we've already done work. We're also looking at uh, this year doing a significant amount of work for uh, compliance with, with uh, SB 1383, which is a, a recycling component for, um, for compostables essentially, which will bring, bring you uh, compostable bins at your house um, and that all work will all, all need to be in place by January of next year. So a lot of a lot of work to make that all happen to be in compliance with state law. Uh, we always look for other opportunities, for instance, to improve our electrical electric vehicle electric vehicle infrastructure. You'll see something on that soon um, and uh, environmentally throughout whenever we're making, uh, when, whenever we're taking on projects, capital projects, we look for opportunities there. And certainly our Connect Los Goddess program is foremost amongst that. So those are just some examples of things that roll up into this, this category. So just because we're not talking to you on a, uh, on a regular basis about this category doesn't mean that we're not working on it. We're certainly using that as a lens, uh, how we look at all of the work that we do. And, and if I could follow on, I, I think, you know, this sounds sounds exciting. Actually, we're moving ahead on on some of those projects. Um, lots of people in our community want to be involved. Also, um, and I know it's great that PPW is off working on this. Um, how can the community engage and give more ideas and and maybe be part of the process a little bit? Thank you, Ms. Prevetti. I'll jump in here, uh, following on with Mr. Morley. As Ms. Prevetti mentioned, I'm Joel Paulson with the Community Development Director for the town. Um, we are going through our general plan update. We do have an environment and sustainability element, which will have a number of goals, policies, and implementation programs around sustainability. Um, one of the implementation programs actually is to update our sustainability element. Um, it was done in 2012. So I think there are always opportunities and we always look for participation in our general plan update, which is kind of our long term vision. And then when we get down to um, the council prioritizing or directing staff to uh, fulfill that implementation program after the general plan update is completed, then we would bring on a consultant to perform that work and then look to also see if we're uh, able to get that to be a climate action plan as well, if we can go that far. It's generally a challenge with the jurisdiction of our size and the lack of um, mass transit, but those are things that we're exploring and we will continue to move forward with that. And so again, I would encourage everyone to get involved, A, with the general plan, and then with uh, the housing element, and then future uh, efforts such as updating the sustainability plan. Thank you. Any other questions, council members? Okay, so now I invite those in attendance to our meeting um, to speak to us. Uh, you will have three minutes. And again, this is an opportunity for everyone in attendance that's an attendee to share their thoughts on the strategic priorities that have been identified. Uh, uh, you've heard the discussion of ongoing priorities in progress and, uh, and also just a practical assessment of the resources and how slim the resources are to really undertake new priorities, but really an opportunity to share how you prioritize these priorities in your own view. So I'll start to take um, people over and first is Amy, then Redemption, then Michael Biller. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Um, so I sent in the desk item uh, which was a proposal for diversity, equity, and inclusion committee uh, that was scheduled to make it formal. The committee would create monitor and monitor a database that would catalog discrimination and hate incidents. So that way we have an actual, an actual measurable metric with which to track our progress. The committee would make recommendations about programs to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion in all aspects of town government, including but not limited to housing, affordability, commerce, transportation, safety, and policing. 
it would review existing town policy or ordinances with a racial justice lens and sponsor and host events to bring people together. Uh, I wanted the other people, townspeople to know since this wasn't in the actual um, agenda. So many nearby cities and towns already have this kind of a committee, such as Palo Alto, Mountain View, South San Francisco, Lafayette, Livermore, and tiny little Piedmont with only 11,000 people living there. So if they can do it, so can we. Despite what the town manager said, I urge you to formally approve the formation of such a committee and provide it with the necessary resources. Uh, the time to do this is now. We have momentum both nationally and locally to do this right now. Lestado seriously lags in this area compared to all of our neighboring uh, nearby cities and towns. And we need the right people looking at this to look at things from a racial lens. I don't think we can just count on it getting done if we don't have the right people who are actually focusing on it and putting in a large amount of time. We also need data. We need measurable data so that we have some sort of metric so we can see if we're even making progress in the area of racial justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And basically, if we don't have a committee, it's not gonna be any one particular pers person's responsibility to get this done. That's why I proposed this committee or task force. So, um, you know, and sadly, I think we've seen by the events over the last month that Los Gatos is a bit of a magnet for white supremacists. So more than anywhere in Santa Clara County, we need to put more focused effort into combating this and making this town a better place. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Amy. Any questions, council members? Thank you, Amy. Oh, I, hold on. Council member Hudas. Um, Thank you for speaking on this topic. Uh, one question I had is about the makeup of the uh, commission that you're proposing. Would you see this going through the process that most, if not all, well, I can think of one exception, the Finance Commission, but almost all other commissions and committees go through the same process uh, of being appointed by the town council? Is that what you would envision for this? Uh, I'm not on mute still anymore. We can, no, hear, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, honestly, I'm not 100% sure about that. I think applications should be open to the public, but I think the council, as the decision makers of who goes on the committee, needs to make sure that the committee is very diverse and represents the diversity of the area. In other words, the committee would have people of different races, different religions, maybe different socioeconomic uh, statuses, uh, different genders, um, things like that. So that would have to be part of it in the decision making. And um, I also think ideally we have some people who have done past work in the area and sort of have some experience within the area in terms of advocating to um, racial justice and equity. I think that would be important. I mean, obviously um, I myself would be applying <laughs> to be on this committee. Um, and I hope that a lot of people would. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. Next speaker is coming from Redemption. Can you hear me? We can, welcome. Thank you, so um, yeah, sorry, this is, I didn't change my name. My name is David McGregor Scholes. Um, I am the president of the Chamber of Commerce and my wife and I own the retail store Redemption uh, in downtown. 
Um, I'm just coming on today. We actually had um, a chamber merchant member meeting this morning. Um, and we, you know, we obviously we discussed the situation and I just wanted to bring to your attention some of the points, the main points that came from that meeting. Um, first of all, I think we remember from last last week, there was talk of the best way that the economic um, recovery fund could be used. Uh, there was talk of obviously the Parkwood program, but then also, you know, grants would, would that help merchants and because obviously they're not benefiting directly from the Parkwoods like the restaurants are. But after the conversations this morning, it does seem that the merchants understand that the money for the park for the Parker program will help increase foot traffic in general downtown, which obviously is kind of the best way that the merchants can seem to be helped with that Parker program is having more people around. Um, they did bring up the main points really for them were that um, a parking there a couple apparently recently a couple of merchants have had situations where they've had customers in maybe they're only customer for the day and they've had to run out because of a parking they're about to get a parking fine and so they've lost that sale for the day so there were quite quite a few angry members just regarding parking at the moment like if people are yeah yes illegal parking should still be looked into but just in general parking downtown should absolutely be just left alone let, let people be in the town the parking lots there's no issue with parking spaces um, so, you know, if people are coming to, to town, please let them stay and, and hang around if they if they can, not not have to be worried about running off. Um, and then the other thing was the business license fees. Just something, something to help the merchants. You know, every 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 dollar counts for them at the moment. So whatever the town can do to um, back those off or negate those for the foreseeable future so that the merchants are not having to worry about dealing with that as well um the and then we kind of i think also that came out of it was the idea that really the town needs to be available the best way they can help the merchants is just to be as open as possible for things to happen downtown as we're allowed to so events if you know if the chamber comes to them with a plan for an event the town is ready to go able to turn things around quickly give us the permission give us the the chance to make um people or to give, to give people a chance to come downtown with whatever we plan to do so um we would just like you uh, so any anything that the town can do to negate the financial impact on the merchants you know um that's seems to be the best way you can help them um seeing as they don't really benefit directly from the parklets like the restaurants do so thank you very much thank you that was very helpful any questions okay thank you very much oh. Michael Miller. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Okay. Great. So um, I joined the uh, Los Gatos Arts Commission about three, year three years ago. And the past two years, I'm serving as the chair of the commission. I'm calling to support the proposed arts ordinance. Um, this is something we've had in the planning stages for quite a few years. and. Um, it'll have no effect on the town's budget. Public art adds enormous value to the cultural and aesthetic and economic vitality of a community. It is now well accepted in urban design and the public art contributes to a community's identity. Um, it fosters pride, a sense of belonging and enhances the quality of life for our residents and visitors. I've spent my career in the arts and, and I know that art influences in, in society by changing opinions, instilling values and translating experience across time and space. Research has shown that art affects the fundamental sense of self. Painting, sculpture, music, performing arts are, are all, all considered to be a re repository for a society's collective memory. More locally, a commitment to public art provides professional opportunities for artists and cultivates an environment here in Los Gatos in which the creative promise of our town can be on display for all to see. I really hope that you will look at this thing if the commission is anxious to move on this and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, I do have a question for you, so please don't walk away just yet. I'm but, here. <laughs> um, uh, Eight council members, any other questions of Mr. Miller? 
Okay, so Mr. Miller, you, you, I, I hope you heard the conversation we had prior to opening public comment. Um, I believe Council Member Risto said, how do our priorities trickle down to the commissions? But you also heard a sneak preview that we, the council will be asking each commission to have a joint meeting. And one of the questions I intend to ask is, is how does the commission, how will they look at better incorporating some diversity, equity and inclusive ideas into the work that you're doing and so the question is is this something that you can bring back to your commission so that when we do have a formal um, discussion on it it's not something that just takes you by surprise um yes i think that's something we can absolutely talk about and you know to, from my point of view art has always been colorblind it it just it, it crosses cultural so you, you look for artists in 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 all the different uh uh, genres and and even as we looked at one of our gateway projects which is in progress now we got submissions from dozens of artists so we're looking at, at at how we can actually draw different people into the commission but also creating the art will bring community together which in itself kind of creates diversity in your community if you have a common bond through public art and performing arts that answer your question? It does, thank you. Any other questions, commission, uh, council members? Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Next speaker, Maureen Kapanjavi. Can you hear me? We can, welcome. Well, uh, uh, good evening, Madam Mayor, Vice Mayor Rennie, council members and town staff. My name is Maureen Kapanjavi. I am the former director of New Museum Los Gatos and I'm serving my third term as a member of the Art and Culture Commission. I'm here this evening to voice enthusiastic support for approving the passing of the Percentage for Art Ordinance and support the development of public art projects in our town. This is a private sector arts contribution program, meaning no public funds will be collected or used to support public art projects under this ordinance. It is a popular tried and true funding model that has been adopted by many municipalities in the Bay Area, across the state and throughout the country. As an art and culture commissioner, I, along with my fellow commissioners, have spearheaded this effort that began almost five years ago. From the get-go, this initiative received enthusiastic support from the council and town staff, and it aligns perfectly with the core goals and top priorities identified in the fiscal year 2020 through 2022 strategic priorities report. The T's have been crossed, the I's dotted, it's fully baked and it's ready to go. And so it is my hope in this new year and here tonight that we can carry this winning initiative over the ordinance finish line and get on with the exciting business of enlivening and enriching our town and our lives through the gift that keeps on giving, the gift of public art. And if we've learned anything during these many dark COVID months, it's that life is short and we cannot take anything for granted. So let's give ourselves and our community the gift of art to fill our lives with light and color, beauty and joy, wonder, magic, transcendence, opportunities for lively and civil debate and discussion, fun and laughter, knowledge and power, empathy and compassion. Please let's do this. I thank you for your time and I remain at your service. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Council Member Risto. Uh, yes, I have one question for the speaker. Um, thank you, Ms. Captain Javi. Um, if you did, you see the list of ordinances and the order um, that they're in right now. I think it's number two. It's number two, and I'm the uh, the one that's in front of it is the face covering ordinance. I assume you are comfortable with the public art ordinance remaining second after the um, mask ordinance. I'm just happy to that it's on the agenda. Okay, great. Sure. Thank you. I'm ready to wait. I've, I've been waiting in line for five years. I can wait a little longer. Thanks. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Sierra Barston. Hi, thank you and hello, I'm Sierra and I'm a resident of Los Gatos and I would like to voice my wholehearted support for the creation of a separate diversity, equity and inclusivity committee 
I understand that there is a lot of time and labor that goes into the creation of such a committee, but I truly don't think that there is anything that deserves more prioritization from this town council than justice, especially after seeing how openly racist and hostile Los Gatos residents have been over the past year towards residents of color. Um, I also find the lack of an aggressive anti-racist agenda rather alarming, and I'm not even being personally affected by racism in Los Gatos, but I can see how it is affecting and driving out our residents. We desperately need new, affordable, and thorough housing initiatives that actively bring in more low-income and BIPOC residents, comprehensive police reforms that make Los Gatos more welcoming to non-white folk, including the reduction of a police budget that serves to protect largely white affluent neighborhoods. We need to expand and diversify public transportation for both environmental and affordability reasons. I think that if the protection of Los Gatos' BIPOC residents and the diversification of our largely white town is actually a priority, then it must be treated as such with comprehensive anti-racist policy written by a committee of people who represent the marginalized interests of this town. I personally would love to see a committee consisting of people of color, queer folk, people of marginalized religions, and low-income folks. We desperately need to uplift people into positions of power who actually need protection the most. Otherwise, how are they supposed to count on their needs being met by people who don't suffer from the same injustices? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Kiyoshi Nishide. I believe you're still on mute if you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now you can I hear can me. I can hear you. All right. I was doing dishes now. Okay, we lost you again. Oh. Are you there? Yes, we're here. Okay, great. Sorry. Um I fully support diversity, equity, inclusion committee that Amy proposed and uh, everything Sarah said. I am a little bit confused because uh, this meeting started out by town manager stating safety, quality, inclusion are very important among other things. And uh, what I am uh, observing is that people of color do not feel safe or do not at least feel safe all the time. They are physically attacked, mentally hurt or damaged, and they do feel uh, like a second citizen in town. And uh, they, uh, you know, they don't feel included in some of these activities. And you know, arts is great, but it's really something that this committee, town managers, town council needs to think about it and think if really, you know, there is a problem if Los Gatos really has a problem or not. And if we're gonna just, you know, put it under the rug again, uh, that's fine. But if we're gonna do something about it, we have to recognize the issue and start working on it and just, you know, don't stick on two year planning horizon and say it's not priority. And uh, you have to think about it hard and other towns are doing it like uh, Amy did some research so I think we have to uh, put some thinking into it I didn't write a speech so that's all I have <laughs> yeah, thank you any questions yes you have one question um, council member Risto uh, yes uh, thank you mayor thank you Mr. Nishide um, to you and others who are speaking out on this um, it may not be instant if we even had a committee, but the other thing that I'm thinking about is we really need to make sure that people who care about um, diversity, equity, and inclusion apply for the commissions that we have existing in our town so that we make sure that when we're talking about transportation, members on there are thinking about the diverse populations and modes of transportation. When we talk about the housing element, we wanna make sure that we've got applicants who will help us um, you know, think about different types of housing and who's being included. And so I'm not dismissing the idea of this commission, but I think in terms of direct action, 
potentially some of the best ways, including continuing to speak out, continuing to be part of um, the discussions. I wonder, I know that we had some people apply to the Planning Commission, but is your coalition, coalition or is your group also talking about becoming part of the other commissions that we have existing and making sure that we have that inclusion lens on our other commissions? So uh, other people can chime in as uh, their turns come in, but we're talking about a big issue. And, uh, you know, we have to start from somewhere. Uh, racial issue is, you know, that shows up in many different ways. Uh, little things that happen in downtown, uh, housing issue, socioeconomic issue. I mean, there it's a, it's a huge issue. So we're not looking for quick solution. We're just, I think, you know, we need to have a committee to figure out what's the short term goals. What can we do? What would make Los Gatos better over five years, 10 years, et cetera? How do we deal with housing issue? How do we deal with, you know, affluent people versus not affluent people? I mean, it's, it's just huge, huge thing. And uh, I'm sure coalition people would volunteer and we need other people from the other side or different part of Los Gatos to participate. And it's going to be an ongoing issue. And it's just something that we have to start somewhere. Um, and again, the police you know, oversight or police issue came up too. So I'm not here to say here is a solution. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Council Member Badami. Thank you, um, Mr. Nishi. Thank you for your comments. Um, and adding to what Council Member Risto said, as far as applying for different commissions or committees, we're currently going through the general plan update. And that's a committee that puts together um, shaping our future. And one of those things is housing. And that's something that you mentioned as far as affordability goes. This is a genuine opportunity for, for members of the community to provide important input as we go forward in shaping this plan. And I'm, I'm recently- members have done that. Pardon me? Did, did I hear a comment? Okay. Anyway, I, I would welcome- I would welcome you know, participation in coming to some of our meetings. Um, the last two that I've attended as a council member and part of the committee, we haven't had much public participation and we really welcome that. So thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, thank you very much. Our next speaker, Ali Miano. Hi everybody. Thank you for uh, including me in the conversation here. Um, I just want to say uh, that uh, I'm not going to be diplomatic here. Surprise. I'm going to say that as a resident of over 50 years of this town, a lot of us are just sick and tired of business as usual. And business as usual has meant that, um, yeah, there isn't a lot of diversity in, and inclusion. In committees like uh, the GPAC, I attended uh, some of those meetings and I was shocked to see um, an entirely white, large white committee. And these are the folks that are gonna determine what, the next uh, several decades of what goes on in town. Um, so there's gotta be a recruitment effort. If we wanna have people from different backgrounds, we have to recruit in different areas among different kinds of folks. We can't expect that everybody's just gonna hear about it and know to apply. And in fact, you know, a lot of us can't even think about applying because, you know, we're working extra jobs <laughs> to try to keep a roof over our head in Los Gatos, which isn't cheap, as I'm sure you know. But uh, back to some of the points, um, Ms. Provetti said that having such a committee would have to be consistent with the other committees we have and that those committees themselves should be trying to uh, make sure that equity and inclusion are part of their mission. Of course they should, but frankly, they're not. You can't have a committee that's all white planning the future of this town uh, and not have uh, uh, a bias. It's just not gonna happen. 
So we need a variety of folks. There's got to be a, a serious recruitment effort. Um, if, if existing committees were doing what they ought to be doing, and, and this is a problem, as we know, in the whole country, but if they were doing what they need to be doing, you wouldn't have had a thousand people protesting down Main Street last summer, or excuse me, I guess it was May, uh, and, and in the subsequent protests that have followed. People are tired of business as usual. We want to see change. We want to see diversity of the various types that Amy and Sierra and Kiyoshi all mentioned, and e even our local businesses. You know, if you don't wanna, you know, uh, help out us little folks, even the local businesses, as you know, are now some of them getting threatening messages. So we have a problem. We need to face it head on. We don't need to worry about doing things the way we've always done them. We need to change. So uh, I see I'm almost out of time. I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Ali. Next speaker, Emmerich Bisbee. Hi, thank you very much. Hello, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Town Manager, Town Councilors, and Los Gatos citizens. I was at an educators conference uh, a couple years ago, and they said that diversity, equity, and inclusion need to be a row and a column in any organization, and especially for this town. A column in that every committee's priorities, to Maria's point, and uh, thank you for the recommendation uh, Mary as as well should be about diversity, equity, and in inclusion, but also as a row by being a committee on its own. And I have two questions. My first question is, how are the committees how are the committees currently formed looking at their projects with a diversity, equity, and inclusion lens? White people make racism their least prioritized focus. Talking about racism or sexism, classism, ableism, et cetera. Um, are uncomfortable for people, especially white people, to talk about. To Ali's point, I see that even in the most recent strategic priorities, the in-progress priorities have changed because of pressure from the community. That change is not happening on its own by the current committees and commissions. My second question is, what accountability is there for these committees to address equity and inclusion? What accountability do they, do they have to, to do that besides the people inside of it, to Mary's point, being people that are constantly looking at this. And even when these separate committees are doing the difficult work of addressing bias, a separate committee is still needed. The racism permeating this town is so strong that it needs a dedicated response with a singular focus. So again, my questions are, how are the committees currently looking at their projects with a diversity, equity, and inclusion lens? And what accountability is there for these committees to address equity and inclusion? Please form this committee. This town needs healing, as Ali was talking about. There's so many recent events that prove this point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Next speaker is Michael. I think we lost Michael. So Michael, if you're listening, come back on, um, but otherwise if we can move to Tom Picro. Unmute. Uh, hello, thank you. Uh, I'm Tom Picro and uh, a, a former chair of the Community and Senior Services uh, Commission and uh, I work to coordinate the uh, Las Gatos Saratoga Service Providers Network here, and also I'm on the county's Area Agency on Aging Advisory uh, Council uh, called SourceWise. So uh, uh, my comment falls under your quality of life and uh, community vitality element. And I'd like to suggest that um, uh, one work to start a uh, age 60 plus long-term study. I feel uh, that a study uh, committed to finding real solutions to age-friendly uh, issues uh, would really be beneficial uh, to the town over the long-term. 
Uh, I think the other issues being raised by, by fellow citizens here are very important, but I think we need to make a start. There, uh, a re-examination of existing programs, of facilities, of uh, the uh, purpose, and uh, with a long-term perspective. One only has to look at our neighbors, such as Saratoga, who I spend time looking at and working with, uh, also Morgan Hill or Santa Clara, uh, cities to see that we really are missing out and uh, I feel falling behind in terms of our, our future planning for what is a, a rapidly growing segment of our population at 60 plus. And so I really like to see an effort to um, work this into the long-term planning and, and to take advantage of people here in the town who would really like to help and lend their energy to such, uh, such effort. Uh, but I, I feel it's, it's not going to go anywhere if there isn't a commitment, uh, a serious interest from the uh, town council, which I feel hasn't, um, it hasn't simply risen to the top up to now. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Procro. You do have a question. Hold on, Councilmember Hudes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Procro. I, uh, in uh, reaching out to the 60-plus community, um, one thing that struck me was that this was not just um, a constituency. You know, roughly a third of our voters are over 60. Uh, it wasn't just a group that was looking for more services. It was also a group that wanted to be a service force for the community in a more effective way um, by being better connected to volunteer opportunities uh, and things along those lines of helping families uh, directly, but being better informed about the opportunities to do that. Um, is that your assessment as well that it's that it is somewhat of a two-way street and that second way is uh, is a big plus for the community? Uh, yes, very much so, Councillor. Thank you for raising that. I see us as having two groups, uh, the younger 60 plus community that really is energetic and wants to make things happen and to help and work, work with service uh, committees, uh, uh, groups in town with uh, all sorts of people socialize and try and make life better, not just for seniors, but for, for everybody. And then there is the older group, which someday I hope to <laughs> approach as well, uh, but I still feel like I'm in the younger group and the older group does need services, they need support. And uh, I certainly support those two, and that's why we, we work at SourceWise and other places. But uh, there's, a, there's a nice energetic group of people, I think, who could do the town a lot of good in this uh, first group that I mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Mr. Pacrell. Next, oh, I'm sorry, did any council members have other questions? I thought I saw someone speaking. Okay. Jeffrey Suzuki. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Jeff. Jeff, if you can hear us, we can't hear you. So Ms. Neese, maybe um, I think Jeff might be having some technical difficulties. Um, if we could bring Brian Toy over. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Ms. Uh, Syok. Uh, and uh, bonjour to uh, Monsieur uh, Picro. Uh, so I guess uh, um, my concern here is uh, is jobs and, uh, and uh, I recently uh, had an old, uh, uh, contact uh, reach out to me so that, that was great um, um, this kind of speaks to the uh, um, the uh, the uh, um, good challenge I think that we have here um, 
that's been recognized by uh, the uh, new administration as much as it can you know, be good. Uh, Biden said that uh, um, there's discrimination in violence against Asians. And that quite frankly comes from uh, the history of Europeans going into Asia for one and uh, violence and quite frankly, uh, rape over there against my uh, Japanese and Chinese ancestors. My dad is Chinese, my mom is Japanese, um, maybe else in the Pacific. Um, so I'm just getting the issue out there. I don't really know the answer. Um, I agree with uh, uh, the previous speakers that we need to talk about um, diversity and how the town can be sustainable and how leadership can reflect more than just white people. I grew up in Los Gatos. Um, you know, I, I love the uh, the way it is pretty much right now. I mean, I think the South Bay, um, I've said this before, but it, I think it bears repeating now that uh, um, um, we just need a place where uh, I guess white um, people in the South Bay can be comfortable. And uh, that's Mr. P. Crow. That's also the younger uh, Mr. Uh, I forget what, it, it, what, his, what his name was, uh, Mr. Uh, Emmerich, I think it was. And, uh, um, and that was the case for a long time. It worked for a long time. Uh, I grew up with that. That's great. Um, so now, you know, I'm Asian. Um, California is changing. Um, the nation's changing. The world's changing. Um, you know, uh, uh, the state is now uh, going to be maybe a plurality of, of Latinos or Latinx. Um, so how do we deal with that? Um, no, uh, I guess what I would say is uh, we need to have a place where whites I grew up where white was comfortable. I'm trying to form a relationship um, with someone who's um, probably uh, mostly white. Um, so um, how can we do that? Um, where whites can be comfortable, Asians can be comfortable, and the rest of the mix, um, Muslims, uh, Jews. I'm trying to figure it out, uh, Blacks. I'm trying to work on that. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for sharing your um, your thoughts. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much for speaking tonight. Next speaker, Lainey Tram. Uh, hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi there, my name is Lonnie Tran and I'm a senior at Los Gatos High School. Um, I'm a part of the Environmental Outreach Club here at Los Gatos High School and today I'm representing uh, around 40 members of this club uh, with a majority of us here at this meeting actually. And we would like to voice our concerns about the state of our global climate crisis and encourage the town to consider steps that we can take to fight this together. Um, as we all know, the climate crisis is knocking on our doors um, with droughts, heat waves, and wildfires. And we believe climate policies are a long-term goal that will not distract from current issues. Um, we are really proud that the town is in the works of constructing a new climate action plan. And we would like to present today some ideas that we would like to see in this plan. Um, first of all, we would like to see our reach codes strengthened. Um, Los, Los Gatos is one of the only um, municipalities in the Bay Area whose reach codes only apply to low rise residential buildings. And we hope that we will extend these reach codes to include high rise residential apartment buildings and commercial buildings. Um, we're also proposing a higher degree of electrification applied to existing buildings, um, perhaps requiring water heaters, space heaters, and stovetop upgrades to run on clean electricity. And while we understand that the community might not be happy about mandating a switch to clean energy as the upfront cost is high, one incentive could be offering rebates, such as those provided by Clean Valley Energy, um, the Silicon Valley Clean Energy by fan, uh, financial, financially incentivizing sustainable options, it would greatly help to make our town more sustainable. Um, we would also like the town to begin annually or biannually, um, just depending on the cost, measuring greenhouse gas emissions, which would help us um, create specific goals in reducing our greenhouse gas reductions. 
Um, these are just a few some, a few of our ideas. Another possibility is perhaps making it mandatory for restaurants in our town to have plant-based options. Um, this would not only allow the restaurant to expand to new customers, but also help the environment drastically. Um, we would love to collaborate with the staff as the climate action plan is um, written to provide more input. Um, we believe Los Gatos is a beacon of innovation and we would love to see our own town become a leader in sustainability and serve in, um, as an example for communities around us. Um, we, need, we really need to work together as we fight to protect our planet, not only for our generation, but for future generations as well. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And um, I apologize for mispronouncing your name, Lonnie. No you worries. You do have a question. Um, hold up. C Council Member Hudes. Uh, thank uh, you, Ms. Tran. Uh, the, and, and I think your comments are very valuable because they are local. And many things we hear from a, an environmental perspective are things that are beyond the control of the 14 square miles and 30,000 residents that we have. And every one of your suggestions was, was local, but I'm gonna kind of turn that on its head for one minute and ask, because we do have a voice and a seat on some regional bodies, has your group thought about one or two things that we should be pushing for on a regional basis, either from adjacent uh, municipalities or on a county basis um, that we should be really uh, pushing for that would have an impact on our town? Um, I, we are strongly um, passionate about um, one, one small thing is the burnout ordinance. It's something that is um, existing in counties like uh, Menlo Park. Um, it's where we, we replace um, old, uh, old water heaters, space heaters, um, uh, using, uh, using that time to replace them with um, electric um, rather than gas fired equipment. Um, this burnout ordinance, I think it would really, really make a difference on um, our, our greenhouse gases and our, um, our just helping to decarbonize the town. That's one small thing that I think would really be beneficial um, that, that just because I think everyone will eventually have to replace it um, at some point. So if we can find a way to get our citizens um, to, to think about replacing with electric um, rather than gas, that would, be, that would be amazing. Thank you. And I would uh, just ask if, as, as we continue the dialogue on this, um, that your organization think about some regional solutions or regional efforts that could have an impact um, on our small town that we are. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then I do have a question. I know um, several of uh, you have reached out to, uh, to the town council with your specific thoughts. I'm wondering if there is one email that is best um, or if uh, we should divert questions to you. One of the key things that you requested is to be involved and comment on some of the documents that will be developed. And so uh, do we direct it to you? Do we direct it to the EOC? email address that uh, was in the letters so that we make sure that Director Paulson has the correct address to correspond with. Yeah, of course. Um, it, you can send all the emails to the EOC address. So it'll be eoc.lghs at gmail.com. And so that's our general club email. So uh, many of us were seniors so we'll be leaving um, pretty soon. So we want to make sure the club um, is able to carry on even as we continue forward um, and are not all present at the town. We still want to definitely be involved with helping um, Los Gatos uh, decarbonize. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. And we'll make sure that uh, Director Paulson has that email address. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much. Next speaker, Jeff Suzuki. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I've spent the last few days reading and mulling over the data, the strategic priorities and the work plans for each office and department and have some general comments. First, looking at the police work plan, 
I, I don't see anything that suggests substantial reform. Uh, the reforms we discussed in detail at the community conversation last September, it's, it's actually almost as if we, we didn't have it at all. And I wanted to revisit one of some of the more important things said that evening by our police chief. And this is a direct quotation. Uh, one of the recommendations was to hire a social worker for the town of Los Gatos. I'd be happy to do that. I think we all want that. And I would be happy for that. Um, issues off our, um, if you can take mental, um, me mental issues and homeless off our plates, defund me in a heartbeat, defund me. But I don't think we're there yet. We're working on it. And I think it's very important, but we're trying to work towards solutions. And in concluding remarks, former Mayor Jensen said, this is not a one-off program or a one-off one-stop process. This is a long process we are going to go through. We have heard support for mental health and social services. When I started out, we had to rethink how we use policing. So our plan is we'll try to listen, assimilate what we hear and translate that into action. These strategic priorities and, and work plans are supposed to capture the ambitions of the town. But unfortunately, I, I don't see any text devoted to these reforms. So I'd, I'd consider adding, uh, revising, that section. In this workplace plan, I don't see any mention of a full development and execution of independent oversight. Uh, the question of it ha has already been answered. It needs to be a focus that this answer is implemented. Data collection on arrest citations, incidents, etc., that needs to be publicly released on some periodic timeline. This should be taken very seriously as it is a metric that allows us to further understand our current situation and development of resources specifically dedicated to dealing with nonviolent incidents in this town. There are almost as many mental health incidents as there are crimes against persons and nonviolent non incidents overall make up the bulk of police reports. We hear that these answers are in development and we should make it explicit in these priorities or the, the work plans that the, this development will happen. Uh, we need a more holistic approach to public safety and traditional policing is just one element of that. Finally, I wanted to, I want to ask that we seriously consider having a body of folks specifically dedicated to improving the diversity, equity, and inclusive, inclusivity of the town. Um, what will another community conversation do in terms of policy? I, I ask that sincerely. We've discussed these issues at length. A lot of talk has been had, but more work needs to be done. The reality is that every com committee will prioritize their day-to-day -day operations over the vast issues of social justice, and we are always told it takes time. But as Ali Miano said, eloquently, it is very difficult for public participation to be consistent for a lot of folks. And as a result, I think that we need a dedicated community. Um, I think it should be considered in its own right. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Suzuki. Next speaker, Michael Smythe. Hi, Mayor Syok and uh, council members. Thanks for the opportunity to, to uh, speak to you tonight. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Great. Uh, I've been a citizen, my family and I, since 1991, and uh, we love this town. My wife uh, passed away this last year in the beginning of the year. She was a well-known artist in this town. She sold a lot of her work at the Los Gatos Gallery. And uh, first thing I'd like to do is shout out to my support to my friend Michael Miller and Maureen Javi about supporting the uh, public art ordinance. Um, being a good husband of, a, of an artist in town, um, you know, art makes life just better. And so, uh, but that's not the primary reason I'm calling tonight. The reason I'm calling is my friend Pete Gillo, who owns Gardino's and I are in support of um, item number seven, the commercial cannabis operations and facilities ordinance. Um, you know, this business has come a long way. Uh, as many of you know, I was a former Mercedes Benz dealer in San Jose for many years. I joined my family business uh, in 1982 and ended up taking over the business and running it. We were a top tiered Mercedes Benz and Volvo dealer for many, many years in the community. And we gave a lot of money to the community. We did a lot of charity work. We believe in that. And, you know, the pot business has changed a lot. It's no longer the pot business. It's a, it's a real legitimate business and it's being, um, facilities like this are being opened all over the state of California. I have a good friend who works for gold flora, who is the largest grower, and producer of um, 
marijuana and marijuana products in the state. And um, this is a very professional business that's happening. And the reality is many of our town folk are using marijuana products on a daily basis, but they're having to leave town to go to San Jose to buy it. In the spirit of economic vitality, which is one of your strategic priorities under quality of life, I think it's it would be irresponsible for this group to not carefully and professionally look at this ordinance. Um, my understanding is it could raise as much revenue for the city as a million and a half dollars a year. Um, as an expert retailer, this business can be run very professionally. It can be run in the idea of an Apple store, uh, very clean, very professional, and it can be off of the main drag if you wish it to be on um, University Avenue. And I just think this is something that's too important to not look at carefully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smythe. Um, any questions, council members? Okay. Seeing none, thank you very much and condolences. So. Our last speaker, it looks like, is Catherine. And um, if anyone else would like, oh, we have more speakers. So if anyone else would like to speak, please raise your hand. Catherine. Good evening, council. Um, first, I want to commend all the speakers tonight. It was really fascinating um, and exciting listening to everybody. Of course, as uh, from the chamber's perspective, um, I just wanted to highlight uh, the fact that you have economic and recovery vitality um, uh, as one of your priorities. And I hope that will continue to be at the top of the list. Underneath that, of course, in the finer details uh, is the streetscape revitalization, landscape and lighting, public art installations, community events, park program, other financial aid programs, and the streamlining of permitting, et cetera. Um, we're really appreciative that you've included all that. So thank you. Then I wanted to switch topics a little bit and um, highlight something that I really think could add to the vitality of our community. And that is focusing a little more on our seniors. And as you all know, I think you probably read, they even read about it in Los Angeles, the situation that happened at Good Sam last Friday. And Good Sam, as you know, had an excess of vaccinations or doses to give to seniors. They were supposed to give them to seniors Turned out that they ended up not giving them to seniors, and that's a different story. But I think the reason they didn't give them to seniors was because they didn't know where to find them in our community. Had that CEO had a phone number to call to find the seniors that are so, a third of our population are seniors, and they were ready and willing to go and get those vaccinations. But if you call the town right now, you get a recording that says, you know, it's from March 17th, we're not here, it's COVID, we don't, you know, th that senior that's calling doesn't know where to call next. The next place they call is the rec center, the 55 plus program. No one answers that phone either. They then, fortunately, in many cases, call the Chamber of Commerce. Tomorrow, my staff has meetings with some of these seniors to show them or to teach them, because they don't have computers themselves, they're gonna sit down with my staff so that they can tell them where they can go get their vaccinations. It's a travesty. We've talked about senior programs for years and years, and we do not have a central hub or a place that they can call a second home. It's easy to do. I urge you council to look at the lease agreement that we have with the rec center. We pay them to run the senior program, or excuse me, they pay us <laughs> to run the senior program. We need to find a third party to run our senior program effectively, efficiently, and we owe it to our, the people in our community that have lived here for so many years and are counting on us to make that effort, make that change, and our community will see be so much better for it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Catherine. Next speaker, Leafa Go.
Good evening, council members and town staff. Appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, first, I have to say I'm very encouraged by the priorities and the methodologies that are, are you implementing to achieve these priorities, including senior services, as was just discussed, um, inclusiveness and sus the sustainability element. Uh, to ha hear the high school students talk about how they want to become more engaged, I think is, is just a, a, a a golden opportunity for all of us. Um, the uh, the other thing I wanted to say is I wanted to uh, uh, reiterate Mr. Rennie's comment, especially engaging more community, uh, diverse members of the community to participate in the committees and commissions and the various programs, I think is gonna be very healthy and helpful for all of us as our demographics are including more senior citizens and uh, a more diverse population. The third thing I'd like to talk about is, as was mentioned a few minutes ago by Mr. Smythe, and coincidentally, I've purchased two cars from his dealership, but tonight I'm, I'm going to take a counterpoint to him and say that I, I think it's a concern to open up a cannabis shop in the town of Los Gatos. Um, when we're looking at uh, uh, policy priorities, um, I, I, I think that pursuing just having a, a new financial revenue source for the town that is in breach of federal law because cannabis is against the law, against federal laws. I understand that other states and other municipalities are, are uh, endorsing cannabis because of the tax revenue that they can earn, but it's still two things. One, it's teaching the wrong message to the community and particularly the youth in our community that it's okay to break a federal law if you can get some money returned for it. That's just wrong. Uh, the second thing is, of course, cannabis itself is a substance that has some consequences that we all have some understanding of. Uh, if we're going to allow cannabis in town, what are the other things we can do? We can allow vaping product sales, especially to minors. We can reduce the age for purchasing alcohol in town to, if we're going to break state and federal laws, let's do it the same thing and break it down to maybe 18 or 16 years old. There's so many things that we could do to to raise revenue if that's the primary goal of these ordinances, but it should not be. It should be sustainability of the community, the quality of life in town, and not breaching laws or communicating that message to, to the rest of our community is what we should be focused on. And instead, let's go back and look at the priorities that were talked about earlier this evening, which were very important, very helpful, and very engaging. So with that, please consider not going forward with cannabis in town. Thank you. Council Member Hedas. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Fago. Um, I know that uh, there are there's a variety of opinions about this in town. M uh, my question is about, has there been very much outreach or discussion on this topic and do you think there should be more um or, or are you advocating to uh, move forward with your position well i'm advocating we not go forward but but that's me i think the the, the proper methodology is to have a community discussion to get an understanding from the community of of their their understanding of the issues and their perspective, that's the way I think we can move forward as a community. Um, and then hopefully through that process, uh, we'll make the right decision going forward and not bring cannabis into town. But let's talk about it. Let's engage people uh, from throughout the community to, to discuss it and learn and get it fact-based information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your perspective. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Fago. Next speaker, Dr. Ellis Weaker. Thank you. Can you hear me, uh, Marika? Yes, we can. Welcome. Oh, perfect. So thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Uh, first of all, I'm a, a member of the commission and a very devoted one, actually. I've enjoyed uh, my experience working with a lot of different people from the community who have uh, who love art and love culture and are trying their level best to share it with everyone else in town. Um, 
I, I would applaud, I applaud actually Michael Miller and Maureen Kapanjabi's comments about the value of art and culture to our community. It, it's, it's a precious thing, it really is. And it brings so much joy to people. We need to do everything we can to further um, uh, uh, cement this and, and to give it more life uh, if it's possible. Um, uh, the, uh, I want to speak specifically to the public art ordinance, which is actually the culmination of many years of strategic planning uh, supported by the council. And, and we really appreciate what you have done in helping us to better formulate and clarify what it's supposed to do. But uh, the, the, the thing that we all have noticed uh, you know, for many years now is the fragility um, of art and culture without some kind of a, a firm platform, financial platform for support. You know, it, it doesn't just limp along and, and have any sort of value unless there's a, a continuity. And, and other communities we have found have, have gained great value in having a steady stream of financial support. And, and, and they've also been able to attract other private money with that from other uh, members of the community. So we're really thinking that's important. I, I've, I've been very fascinated uh, by the whole topic of in inclusivity and uh, diversity. And I want you to know that uh, of all of your commissions, probably the Arts uh, and Culture Commission are the most welcoming of that because we, we love art and art itself just comes uh, to life with diversity, it comes to, to life with people with new ideas. The ideas don't have to be staid and, and conservative. They can be radical for all, you know, I mean, there's a lot of great art that, that you know, came from that background. So. I want you to know that if you've got somebody who wants to serve on our commission and you think that that would help uh, serve the, the, the benefit of being, uh, bringing diversity to our commissions uh, and, and to our town, we're open. Um, the other thing and the last thing I want to mention is that there's a positive effect of culture and art on people who are probably feeling very isolated right now and somewhat depressed because of the pandemic. And this can brighten up people's spirits. So that's the last I wanted to say, but thank you again for allowing me to say a few things about this subject. It's a very, I'm very passionate about it, obviously. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Dr. Weaker. You're welcome. And our next speaker is Sarah N. Hi, I just wanted to come in really quick and say that I fully support the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. And I think that's something that's really important and it would definitely benefit the town. Um, and I support what Mr. Suzuki said about all of the police oversight and those changes. I think that's something that is different and that the town definitely needs. Um, and working on inclusion and just changing kind of a known reputation of the town would be really important and beneficial to everybody is that it's known as a welcoming town um, that supports diversity and equity. And that's just what I wanted to say that I fully support it. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay. So I see no other hands raised. Um, I can't tell, Tom keeps going on and off. Um, but, and I can't tell if this is uh, the same speakers that uh, spoke. So Amy, um, if this is the same Amy that spoke earlier, Amy Nishide, we um, only have an opportunity once. And so I'm not sure, um, Ms. Niece, are you able to tell if it's the same? I'm not. She just is listed with her first name, but I have not seen another Amy on here. Oh, okay. Um, so then what if we can uh, bring her over? Hi, it's the same Amy, but um, Oh, I'm sorry. Give, wait, 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 give um, Mr. Weaker my information, please. I might be interested in that committee. Okay, if staff, if we, if I can work through staff to have that information exchange, that would be great. So Amy, um, this is the town clerk. Um, I'll contact you to get your information to pass it on to the Arts Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now seeing no other um, hands raised. And I, again, I see Tom keeping, 
Uh, let's bring Tom over. I see that. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council, staff. Um, I am wanted to thank you for your support of the Arts Assessment Ordinance. Um, just to be clear, I think the last year the the assessment ordinance was passed, but it was postponed uh, in March at the meeting due to the COVID crisis. And it was really all the work has been done uh, to kind of clarify, we've actually been working on this program for over 10 years. Uh, I've been on the Arts Commission at least, I think that long. And we have worked uh, with, the, with the town, with the staff, we've done uh, immense public outreach about this this uh, ordinance uh, for almost uh, two years. We did surveys and went out to uh, all all different sorts of people through different uh, uh, methods of of co contacting the public. We uh, we really appreciate how hard the town has worked with us to get this and move it down the line. Uh, I know the the uh, Rob Schultz has is on the 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 his memo to move us along here and we really appreciate anything you can do to get us to the first second reading and finalizing this this ordinance uh the town's art commission uh has been extremely uh, well accepted uh, and and once again i like to point out that this is not going to cost the town anything some of the worries that we had was that it's going to affect real estate developers and real estate buyers but I want to tell you that I've been in the real estate business for 44 years uh, on almost all phases of it. And the, it's such a small fee. It's a, a one half of 1%. Uh, it's such a small fee that is paid for in the, in the development process. And what it is, it turns out to be an amenity, just like our schools, just like our downtown, just like our, our, our great park system, just like our trail system. It's an amenity that everybody wants. Public art, may, as uh, um, Dr. Weaker has uh, stated, it makes people happy and it's a, a, just a wonderful thing to, to move along. Um, I can assure you that this, this fee will not affect the economic vitality of, of the real estate market. In fact, due to the, the, the lack of housing completely, we're, Santa Clara County is 150,000 houses short of, of, of meeting their goals at this point anyway. Uh, so I think that it's, 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 it's a, somewhat of a moot point. But we really appreciate you pushing it through. Like I said, it was, it was approved last year, but it was just postponed because of the COVID and we like to get it up and going. We've, we've done so many good things. We have other things to, on, on the books that we like to get out, but we want to start with one small win and that would be this, this uh, getting this assessment approved. Uh, thank you very much and I do appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, Alicia, Alicia Cinema Stereo. Hello, can everybody hear me? We can, welcome. Okay, hi. Um, hi, Maria, Mariko, everyone. Um, it's good to see you. Hope everyone is well. Um, I just wanted to call and also say that I think that this town really needs uh, a committee that is dedicated to help race relations um, with within the town and also um, just helping businesses understand what an inclusive community looks like, feels like, sounds like. Um, I have been involved in trying to have businesses be understood um, after um, problems um, that they might have had with um, the Love Over Hate March. Um, and I really think that if we had a committee, if I had other people that were on the committee that were able to help me, um, it would be really great. Um, I am part of the anti-racism uh, Los Gatos Coalition. Um, I am running the uh, Instagram page. And over the last two days, we have had 200 people who are Los Gatos, Los Gatos citizens that have joined. 200. Um, 
the my my inbox is absolutely full of people who want to help who want to become involved who don't know how to get involved with the city council don't know where to go um and if we had a committee if we had an actual group um i think that we would see some definite change uh right now we have the people i would think that you guys would be happy about that and want the help uh people want to help I'm here, I want to help, our coalition is here, we all want to help, let us. If we had this committee, it would just really help. Thank you. Thank you, any questions? Thank you very much. And uh, I see no other hands. So before I close public testimony, I'm looking at the screen and I think I'm gonna close it now. So council members, I um, look to you for questions of staff, and then we'll begin our discussion. Vice Mayor. Uh, so I'm, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with too many things to do. Um, I, I can't say any of the ideas were bad. They're all wonderful things we want to do. So I've been sitting here scratching my head many times, if, if you happen to see. Um, to me, it's about what can we take off of our plate um, and, you know, when I look at the strategic priority list, there's not a whole lot on that one that, that could come off there. Um, and so I'm started thinking I'd be willing to take some things and, and you know, I realize this might be, I, I don't want to be micromanaging for the town manager, but um, in terms of what I, I start thinking, okay, who can do what kinds of things on your staff? And I know that's up to you, but, um, what can I take off? What am I willing to take off of those people with the right skills um, plates in order to get more stuff done? For example, some of the stuff listed on on the what the library has to do, I think could be put off. Um, I think very highly of Mr. Baker. So if we wanted to ha hand him, for example, again, I don't want to micromanage for you. I just want to talk about things to take off the plate on the right places. I think he could lead inclusivity diversity equity kinds of efforts um for example um just i'm just thinking here you know where can we take things off the list um i feel like we've worked really hard on the policy committee um for you know quite a few years i'm wondering if we can back off on some of the work they're doing to because those the people that often help on the policy committee are ones that um probably need to work on s some of these new new ideas also so uh, you know the I, i'm giving a couple suggestions maybe react to those suggestions or other suggestions where can we take some things off of the plate so we can you know put more of these you know extremely important subject matters that have been mentioned and and i appreciate um Vice Mayor, how you're thinking along the lines of how do we basically, how do we use the resources that we have? What I'd love to do before we get into all that is one, let's affirm, first of all, um, let's start with the highest level. Let's affirm the core goals that we have identified year after year. Are those still the same goals that this council agrees to? And then let's bring it down a notch and talk about the ongoing priorities. And as you've done, Vice Mayor, look at, is there anything that we believe is no longer a priority? Um, and then let's talk about some of the new ideas. And I, I you know, we can each share our thoughts. Um, ultimately, I think we have to rely on the town manager and the department heads to figure out how to best implement, um, and maybe that's at a next meeting. But I'd love for us to, first of all, like hear from everyone as you have done, are the goals that has been identified by previous councils, the goals that this current council still agrees with, and then, the, and then strategic priorities that have been brought over as vice mayor has already done, are they still priorities that you feel should be strategic and priorities or are there things that should be taken off? So I'd love to have that and then we can continue that conversation. Because if we've decided at a high level that one of the goals is not necessarily it, that changes our conversation significantly. Vice Mayor? 
Um, so I'll just finish. You know, I did sort of mention, I, I looked at this list and, and it's really tough to take anything off of it. The one thing I would, I think, take off at this point, um, under prudent financial management, it talks about addressing the pension obligations. Um, we just put in $9 million recently to that. Um, I'm not seeing where we're going to, you know, and this was there because we knew we were going to have surpluses. We were having surpluses year after year. Um, it doesn't look like we have surpluses anymore for, you know, uh, until we come up with some new kinds of um, revenue sources. So I think at this point we might take that off of there. We've, we've addressed it. We probably can't do much more with it and replace it. I would still keep prudent financial management, but I would replace it with something that says, you know, uh, find new revenue sources, um, explore new revenue sources, um, and source future capital projects. Because I, I'm concerned there, there is, you know, Mr. Kewen's letter before I'm con is, I think, somewhat on on mark that there isn't any money for future capital projects without us doing something to raise revenue. So that's what I think should be in this place. And then the other thing under quality of life, we, you know, it doesn't even mention seniors on here. So some wording, and maybe we can't get to it right now. Mr. Picro was uh, realized it and said long-term planning, right? But we need to at least have it on this word, couple words on this chart um, about seniors so that we're thinking about moving those programs forward. And I do have some, I don't know if it's the right time, but I had some questions about what is the status of our senior program. Is that the right time to ask that? Actually, questions are actually the perfect time right now. So I, I know other council members want to jump in. Let me just ask that question and then I'll, I'll give over to some others. Um, what is the status of our senior? I know it's tough with, with COVID, but we, we lost Janet Sumpner, who was doing a great job there with senior programs. And then we contracted to Saratoga, but I've been hearing that contract's gone. You know, what, what is the status? Let's say COVID ends in a few months. What's the status of our program? It, is it completely shambles with no plan? Well, I, I will start. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. And then I'll ask Assistant Manager Andrews to supplement since he is our staff liaison to our Community Health and Senior Services Commission. So as was mentioned in public testimony, the town does have a lease with Los Gatos Recreation and in that lease, uh, they are required to provide certain uh, senior programs to our town residents. So that is one um, element. In addition, we've got great partnerships uh, through our community grant program that supplements the work of uh, Los Gatos Rec. So for example, we provide community grants to the Live Oak Nutrition Center and to other groups uh, that uh, pay attention to that particular demographic. And then third, we've got the community partnerships uh, through uh, the group that Mr. Procro mentioned where essentially service providers come together. And I believe Vice Mayor, you've come to some of those meetings. So that way we can coordinate the provision of services. So while the town no longer has a, a specific department focused on community services, we um, eliminated that department in the great um, recession. Uh, we are still committed to our seniors and I know that our senior, um, our community health and seniors commission has in their mandate to look at seniors as well as really all demographics. So again, you know, this would be another wonderful commission to look at diversity, equity and inclusion as well. And if I may, um, Mr. Andrews, uh, please augment where we are with with other uh, program opportunities. Thank you. Sure. So as the town manager met and, uh, mentioned, our contract with LGS Rec provided kind of some baseline services through the leadership of Janet Sumpner. They expanded those services well beyond anything that was uh, mandated within our lease with LGS Rec. And so part of what you've seen is with the loss of Janet Sumpner, some of those programs that she had put in place and pretty much managed started to dwindle. And then with COVID, 
unfortunately, one of the things that uh, begets our senior community, which is isolation, became that much more profound during COVID. That being said, LGS Rec has tried to live up to the spirit of their contractual relationship with us. One of the elements they're supposed to provide is a Thanksgiving dinner. And this year they provided that Thanksgiving dinner through a drive-through format. One of the other things they were supposed to provide is the annual kind of summer picnic that used to take place on the civic lawn. They also provided that through a drive-through format. Similar to all of our organizations, they pivoted to a virtual type of programming and they do have a, a gentleman who kind of runs the 55 plus program and he has been providing ongoing newsletters and virtual uh, classes that seniors can attend. Uh, the town manager also mentioned we have a lot of other relationships in town, whether it's the senior nutrition center through our programming in our grant program and then myself and your community health and senior service commission. Some of our new commission uh, council members may not realize that the past year they actually went looked at their uh, resolution and the ordinance for that commission and they went ahead and with the prior council's agreement, changed their adopting resolution. They are now referred to as the Community Health and Senior Service Commission. A lot of the grant recipients that they oversaw are actually tied to community health, whether it's Cassie that helps with teen angst, whether it's the Senior Nutrition Center and things of that nature. And so they have actually completed their goals with actionable items for the coming year that when the time is appropriate, the mayor has mentioned that she would like commissions to present their goals to this council and they are very excited to do that. So I'd like to comment on this, but I'm gonna let the other council members go first. Okay, um, council members, uh, questions would be helpful right now. C council member Hudis. Uh, yeah, so I had one specific question and then uh, I did wanna comment on your earlier question at the goals level um, before diving into the initiatives. So you can let me know when the right time for all of that is. Uh, but the, the question I had is about the uh, police and safety and the work plan. Um, I know that we held the uh, workshop uh, with Judge Cordell and it seemed as though there were agreements at the council level about things that we should proceed with. And in reading the work plan, I'm having trouble finding those things. So maybe some things are linked to the Cordell workshop, but it's not obvious. So uh, things you know, along the lines of hiring a social worker, uh, reporting on violent incidents, uh, a, a, a revamped complaint and investigation process. Um, the items that were identified in that workshop, are we moving forward with those? So, yes, thank you, council member. So um, in September, the council considered, I believe it, September or November, we, <laughs> sorry, all the months kind of run together at this point, but in September, council gave us direction. And then I believe it was in November, we came back and council gave us very specific instructions. So if you look at the work plan and attachment two for the town manager's office, we are leading the town inclusivity and police reform efforts. So that's in my office because we take it very, very seriously. We didn't list out all of the reforms that you just mentioned, it's really the larger bucket. And then when you look at the police department um, work, they do have uh, their work around uh, stop data and making that more readily available, continuing to pursue mental health partnerships with the county is within their work plan um, on page six. So you'll see that it's embedded in a couple of different places. It's not just a police issue. This is an organizational issue. And for that reason, uh, the town manager's office is overseeing all of the reforms. So, yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, and the fact that it's difficult to define, uh, to find and uh, diffuse in terms of responsibility um, speaks to sort of my uh, opinion that we should 
and listening to the comments about the um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is that we may need to be more organized about the way that we are setting those goals, identifying those priorities, and measuring uh, progress on them. Um, just the fact that it, it's hard to find is, is a bit of a red flag um, in my mind. Um, I had a, a comment, Mayor, on the goals, but uh, if if I should hold that, or, or I know that you put that out there for a minute. Yes, I did. And if, if you could hold on to that, and I will come back to you, Council Member Hudis. Any questions right now of staff um, on, on based on what you've reviewed as well as heard tonight? So, and then we can begin the, the discussion, also asking questions along the way. Council Member Badami. Uh, I just wanted to ask the town manager, um, it was brought up to hire a social worker to supplement the work of the police department with the nonviolent calls and that the mental health issues. What is the shape of our budget as far as hiring a full-time social worker to handle that workload and relieve the police department of responding to those types of calls? Thank you uh, for the question. So. Um, as we discussed with the council in September and again in November, uh, you know, we have partnerships with the county mental health behavioral uh, health services. And so we've actually been partnering with them on mental health calls uh, with better success than what we had had in the past. And as Chief DeSena had mentioned to um, the council at the time, you know, he is serving on a task force around behavioral health issues. Um, the council did not forward or request us to hire a social worker because of our budget challenges, but instead asked us to continue the partnership with the county and continue to explore other options around how to best serve our homeless um, and people in mental health crisis. So at this point, we have not been directed to hire such a person. Instead, we are working within the existing mechanisms uh, that we have. And I would say we're, we're probably seeing better partnerships and better response because of it. And I just want to also take this opportunity to remind everyone that our officers have been trained in de-escalation and in crisis management. And so when they are called to a mental health call, they approach it in a very patient and deliberate way. So while they're not social workers, and I understand that the uniform can be intimidating to a lot of people. Uh, the compassion that our officers show is really quite outstanding. So this is an area that will continue to evolve. We've been asked to come back to the council with a status report in June regarding updates on our data in terms of traffic stops. And the chief and I will take that opportunity to also report on these other initiatives and to the extent we're ready before June, um, you know, we would work with the mayor to agendize it accordingly. And I, I just want to also add that this is a, a priority for the town manager's office, uh, as well as the broader inclusivity, diversity, and equity issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so if we could just pivot, um, and not to say that it's least important, but hopefully it's one of the easier questions I'd like to pose to all of you is looking at a high level again at the core goals. Um, I'd like to have a discussion on that. And I know Council Member Hudis, you had some thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, having a chance to look at this fresh, it, it, the goals I think are appropriate. Um, but the times are different. And so I think we need to, th I need to think about it this way, that while we have these goals, our ability to make progress on them is not as easy or even as hard as it was before. We're an entirely different challenge right now where we may have toward the end of the year much, much greater fiscal constraints if our uh, revenues are short and also uh, if our businesses can't get back to where they were, not only in terms of 
uh, you know, being great for business, but also in providing jobs um, in town and, and supporting the workers who work in town. And so in thinking about those goals, I, ha I think that, um, you know, we need to be cognizant of the great amount of uncertainty that we're in and not lockstep move forward with everything um, as much as, as we have. And so I think we need to be able to look at much greater flexibility and along with that flexibility, more opportunities of engagement with the town uh, than we've ever had before. Not that the town is, you know, uh, it's been easy before or that there's anything critical of uh, the way the town is being managed. It's more about just acknowledging that we're in a very different world right, right now and we won't have a business community that can uh, provide the kind of sales tax and jobs that we expect if we don't think um, ahead and provide and reserve some capability for that. So that that's my thought about goals. Okay, thank you very much for sharing that. Council members, other thoughts? Vice Mayor? I guess I'm trying to understand what the conclusion in, in that is. Is that, I mean, I, I, look at the, I look at the goals and they're still all good goals. And I think most of them are, are still fit in what we're talking about. Um, I mean, are we gonna take community character off the list? Um, fiscal stability is what we're talking about. Um, you know, you've said some things Are we talking about maybe adding a public engagement goal that maybe that's not on this list. I'm, I'm trying to understand what you said. It's not, and, and what the, what the conclusion is and what do we change? Oh, well, let me try one more time. I think the goals are fine. I think the goals allow for public engagement. I think that our ability to make progress toward those goals is a very unique situation in that um, the, the economy is teetering and people's jobs have disappeared, a lot of them. And so, and our revenues, uh, so I think we need to approach how we progress toward those goals in a way which has more flexibility and more community engagement. And um, in order to get flexibility, I think that uh, what we don't want to be is where we hard commit um, dollars that won't be available uh, to help our community with the highest priority. And it's the highest priority in the survey it's the highest priority in the seven or nine surveys that I did uh, neighborhood by neighborhood. Economic recovery uh, was and is the number one concern of the, uh, the citizens of the town. So I think that uh, uh, we need to be careful about not saying, okay, we're gonna do all this stuff and you know these funds are gonna be committed for whatever it is for uh, improvements in the library or bike lanes or things like that. And then we have nothing available uh, to put for uh, the, what we might need in economic recovery. So my, my point is that the, the goals are fine, but the way we progress to those goals, I think we have to think differently this year. Thank you, Council Member Hudas. Um, and I look to both Council Member Badami Aristo for either comments or if, uh, if you feel agreement, um, just a motion affirming that agreement. Council Member Badami. I would also affirm um, those core goals, but I would also want to call out um, wildfire safety in particular. Um, there is a lot of uncertainty as Council Member Hudas said, but it's also in other areas and not just in the pandemic recovery. Um, as it is tonight, there's evacuations going on. So it's not just fire related. Now you've got mudslides and flooding and that's due to the burn scars uh, from the Santa Cruz complex fire. 
So I'm going to be very concerned um, about wildfire safety, and I'm glad that it is on one of our ongoing um, priority. Um, but unless you know, Council Member Risto has something more to add, I would be happy to make a motion on reaffirming um, Section A, which is our uh, core values. Okay. Uh, there's a motion in Council Member Risto. Uh, yeah, I'll second the motion. I think we're in agreement um, from what I'm hearing that um, the goals we agree on, we'll get on to the priorities and then later get into the budget and figure out how we're going to approach everything. But this should be the easy part, um, unless somebody's, you know, got an idea for a different goal. So I'll second the motion. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments on that? Seeing none, um, I'll call the question. Council Member Badami? Aye. Council Member Hudis? Aye. Council Member Risto? Aye. Vice Mayor Rennie? Aye. And I also vote aye. And uh, so it passes unanimously, a reaffirmation of our town goals. And so now, as one said, we get into the, the pr priorities for the next two years based on those goals. This is a more substantive discussion. I think Vice Mayor shared a little bit about his thoughts on what is uh, currently on the strategic priorities. Um, what might be helpful because this is a big list is if we just go down and under the bucket of safety i look to council members any comments any questions any refinements um council member badami had already shared um fire protection as one and so this is an area where i'd love to have some conversation council member risto um yeah i think everything that we need to do under safety is pretty much listed one of the questions I have, you know, this, I guess, will get fleshed out is under fire protection with vegetation management and implementation of the ad hoc wildfire mitigation plan. You know, we have that plan. We know what it is. Are we talking about, to the extent possible, with the budget implementing the first two year short term items? Is this something we'd be agreeing to tonight or we would just say that we are behind that and then staff will come back and tell us how that gets implemented. Ms. That's correct. I'm sorry, um, that, that is correct. So we, we just wanna make sure that fire protection is one of your ongoing commitments. And then as we look at our budget, you know, we certainly intend to continue our vegetation management efforts, implement the ecological study that we have now underway so we can find that right balance between habitat protection and um, protecting um, for wildfire safety. Uh, but we, we can't commit right tonight in terms of which specific elements in that plan that we're moving forward. So at this point, we're at a very high level. Uh, and I and to, tonight, so far what I'm hearing is that uh, wildfire protection remains one of those commitments. Council Member Hudis? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment that I think the five uh, or six points that are part of the ad hoc committee report um, really need to be taken seriously. And if we're unable to proceed because of budget, we should find out about it early um, in the process. Um, but the other thing I would suggest, since this uh, is coming out of a relatively new um, committee and initiative, is that we get uh, quarterly updates on progress at the council level on uh, implementing the the uh, the recommendations of the wildfire um, ad hoc committee. Okay. Vice Mayor? I would just also say that I think the, you know, the fire ad hoc committee's five points are extremely important to continue. Um, I know, I, I'm not completely sure how far we're down the list. I don't think we're very far. so. I would say, you know, I would put that at number one or two. If I had to prioritize all the things going on, I put that on at, at number one or two um, in my priority list. Um, I had another thought, but it just left me. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if it comes back. Okay, Council Member Badami. I would want to make sure when we look at the um, desk item from Rob Stump. He had uh, some items uh, for 2021 implementation and item number C had to do with emergency evacuation. And there was a couple of action items that were considered priority number one. 
Um, and to me, when I when I read that, I'm not sure that that would take a lot of money or staff time. So I would want to make sure that we pay special attention to that because we are looking at people's lives and with what's going on tonight, even as I stated earlier with the evacuation from mudslides, we're talking massive property loss and, and public safety, loss of lives. So I would want to call that out in particular on Rob Stump's plan. Thank you. Okay, council members, any um, other comments to the safety bucket, uh, Vice Mayor? Um, I, I wanted to ask a little bit about the budget, and, and I guess this is not really a budget discussion, but understanding what you know, how high you can put things on the priority list. I've I've done you know some checking out of the of the brush clearing around the roads for for this item, and it looks like we've. You know, there's been quite a bit done. I see Foster done, Cypress done. It looks like they're working on Shannon right now. Um, lots of good progress. There's other places to go. Um, how are we doing for our budget? Are we going to need more money to get this decently along? Because this that's certainly an area we spend a lot of money is on all the brush brush clearing. I'm going to ask Director Morley to talk about the status of that program. Thank you. So the council had awarded a contract for $500,000 for brush removal on the roadsides. And we're proceeding through that now on the roads that you just identified council member. Um, we'll, we'll continue to work on that. Um, we expect to finish all of Shannon within our current budget um, and perhaps be able to start on Kennedy. Uh, and we'll run out of money probably the end of uh, well, the first week or two of February in, in that contract. And at that point, we'll do an assessment and be able to report back to you uh, on where we're at and how far we we went. Will we need more money next year? The answer, I think, is, is if you want to continue with your priorities as you set them forward, yes, we will need more funds. I'd also like to remind you that we're, we are currently working on a, a FEMA grant for, um, for mitigation of our open space as well. Um, that's a two-part grant. The first part is the planning element of that that we're in the middle of now. Uh, and then once we finish that, we'll submit for several million dollars worth of, of FEMA funding to be able to do uh, additional mitigation in our open space. All right, that's helpful, thank you. Any other questions on uh, safety as an ongoing priority? Okay, um, and ultimately I think what would be helpful is, um, and Ms. Provetti and, and staff, uh, what I'd love to do is like make sure that we capture all this and then we'll come back and see if someone can capture all the comments that were provided and I'm taking notes as well. Thank you. Okay, quality of life. Oh. Council member Risto. Uh, yeah, when I when I look at quality of life, I mean, the, the items that are in here are really important. And the thing I want to discuss is there's two two items that seem to be glaringly missing. One is anything about senior services or our seniors. I don't know if this would be an appropriate place to add something or if that falls under something else. And then also DEI. I mean, because that is quality of life if we're gonna talk about diversity, um, equity and inclusion. And whether that is a whole series of actions or if it gets folded in, but it just feels like it should be mentioned under there. Actually, and, and I'm in agreement with you. Um, and just to share, I've shared a little bit. I've had my own conversations with the town manager. As she mentioned, uh, this is a ongoing priority that is in the town manager's office. One of the things that I'd like to share with the, um, the council, currently uh, the policy committee, council members Risto and I met yesterday on our work plan is to look at all of the enabling resolutions of our policy of our various committees and commissions to see if there um, is any commission that should be um, revamped um, if any or or if any commissions should stop but also this is as i was listening to the speakers i was actually thinking if this is an opportunity for us to think about either sustainability or DEI, if there's an opportunity to either spread it out among the commissions or create 
enabling resolutions to bring back to all of you for consideration. That was something that I was thinking of proposing to the rest of the council as a work plan item for the policy committee. And so uh, I look to others for thoughts on that. So council member Risto and then vice mayor, Rennie. Um, thank you, Mayor. Thank you for bringing that up because that was in the back of my mind. Um, you know, the council will decide if this is what the policy committee should work on. But I think it's really important to always take a look at our commissions and committees and, you know, see, does it make sense to have a separate committee or do we, you know, in the resolutions add in some of these other items? And I, I don't think we're going to be able to make any, or we should make any decisions about whether we create another committee or not tonight. But I think um, I would look forward to having that discussion of what committees and commissions we have, how they're functioning and how we can best benefit the town. Vice Mayor? Um, I, I like all the ideas, uh, the seniors and, the, and as Maria put it, the DEI added to it um, and taking it to policies committee to, to kind of try to spread it through, you know, lots of places sounds like a good idea. Um, I go back to what some of the speakers were saying, though, about, you know, we need to get people that have experienced it and have, you know, I, I, can, how are we going to get the expertise into the policy committee is, is what I'm thinking. How do we engage more of these people that, like I said, really have experienced it in and, uh, you know, how we, uh, if I was at the policy committee, I'd, I'd be coming with a blank brain going, I don't know how to fix this. Uh, maybe, maybe you've got them all in your head, Mayor, I don't know. But um, that, that's, that's a question in my mind. How can we bring in some more expertise into the policy committee um, to, to move this forward? Absolutely. And I do want to clarify my comment that it wasn't predetermined that it would be spread out. I think what we would, what I was envisioning was that we have the discussion, the pros and cons of spreading out or creating a committee that we then bring back to the full council. Um, uh, I think that's a, a large priority that the full council should make the decision on. And we would do the legwork of the process and the mechanisms to get us there. I think, um, and I'll let um, our uh, Mr. Andrew speak to it, but when we created the finance committee, we did have to at least begin conversation on the enabling resolution. And, and then that helps determine what exactly the composition would be. And the other reason why I, um, I, I want to share with you why I'm thinking along this route is, as mentioned um, in the past, the Cities Association has made it a priority also to look at DEI and racial justice. And given the work that they're going to do and the resources they're going to expend, I'm wondering if there's an ability to piggyback onto that work. So it's not necessarily town resources that have to be expended, but we're contributing to what uh, the larger pool will be paying for. So that's those are the considerations I want to pose to all of you. I just I'd, I'd say yeah, that's very helpful. I I think I misunderstood you a little bit the first time. So thank you for the clarification. Council Member Hudas, and then back to Council Member Risto. So I, I wanted to focus on uh, under quality of life, the community vitality heading. And uh, I think that, you know, as it's worded, the community engagement is maybe a little bit less compelling than the need to, to at a high level, commit to diversity, equity, and inclusion and maybe look at what was included in community engagement and sweep that under um, that level. And um, trying to do this in a way that we don't just, you know, add things without uh, reconciling other efforts that have been going on. Um, but I also think that within that category, uh, we need to begin the process of serving our 60 plus residents better. The reality is that uh, the services have actually declined. This comes from talking to people who use those services, who participate in those services, and uh, they've been declining at the same time that population has been growing. 
So those are two curves that are working against each other. And so I think that we need to explicitly uh, work now. It doesn't mean we're going to implement very much this year for the reason I mentioned earlier, that I think our progress uh, toward goals, but through these initiatives is somewhat going to be limited. But I do think we need to start and we need to commit to uh, serving that community better and also looking at how that community can serve the town. They are, they have a ton of ideas, uh, had like 14 pages of ideas uh, when I asked that question of people, um, ways that that community can be a service force for the town. So I would advocate for adding uh, the 60 plus community to that community vitality area. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Yeah, I forgot I was going to comment on this. Uh, I, I would agree with um, uh, Councilmember Hudis also. Um, be before, you know, we go back a couple of years before Janet left, we were doing a, an okay job with seniors. And then Janet left. And as Mr. Andrews, you know, said also that, you know, we, we got what we paid for instead of more of than what we were paying for. And I, I have concerns also with um, the, the, both the, the nutrition, the Live Oak Nutrition and, li and Live Oak Daycare that, you know, because of COVID, those programs have kind of been decimated. You know, Live Oak Nutrition is basically just feeding the homeless. There's no, there's, there's no seniors coming down there. And we know, so my, my point is we may have to get out the jumper cables and jump jumpstart all of this once we get past COVID, it, it, you know, I'm worried it won't just come back by itself. You know, there, there's, there's habits, people were coming down for nutrition to meet with their friends or coming for the daycare, right? Um, once COVID's over, I'm worried that they won't just do that. We may need to actively do some things to put the jumper cables on the programs to, to get them going. And you know, it's clearly not the right time to do that. Some, I think Catherine would argue, well, we need to start planning for it. We've got a lot of other things that are actually a little more pressing, but we need, I, you know, that's why I also said we should have it on here. So we remember that to come to it in our, you know, as we work through, as Matthew was saying, be flexible on when we're working on which goals. So I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing <laughs> with what he said. <laughs> Okay, so it sounds like we have consensus on um, on quality of life as well for 60 plus and DEI and and please if you if that's not what if I'm reading your faces incorrectly, please correct me. Um, traffic transportation, another large strategic priority. Um, would anyone like to comment on this uh, and any refinements and or clarifications. Councilmember Hudes. So I would, uh, you know, overall the list looks good, uh, in in and responsive to um, the community's needs. The thing that I would ask us to consider is under not changing it, but just thinking about accelerating the rollout of the uh, short and medium term actions from the Dixon report because they relate directly to the economic vitality as the uh, outdoor dining picks up again and the streets get crowded and uh, there's no parking for retail. Um, we need to think about how to make that happen faster. It's not a new item. It's just an emphasis uh, that, that uh, I think we need to pay. Any other comments to that, Vice Mayor? Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, you know, and right now we have much less school traffic, so, and, and rush hour traffic. I think we're going to get hit with summer beach traffic, but we've spent a lot of effort in the past that really made no, no difference. Um, so I, I think what I'm saying is, yeah, let's, let's work. You know, we, we've got a tough list of things to do. Let's let's focus on ones we can move forward. And I would agree the Dixon report 
is a good place for our, our PPW to be spending their efforts in, in you know, much less so on, on some of the, the traffic issues right now. Council member Risto. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I, you know, having the Dixon report on here, I think we want to, um, as we move forward, implement all of phase one. And, you know, I imagine the council will discuss that more, but right now we don't have a parking problem because we don't have a lot of people or all our employees down here, but a lot of fixing the parking issues is changing habits. And the only way we're going to change habits is implementing the employee parking program, making sure we have signage and the best time to change habits is before people set their habits poorly when things start to ramp up. So I, I know that the town is moving forward with at least two of the parts in phase one. Um, so, you know, just more agreement that that's important. And with the beach traffic, I know that we had um, efforts underway last year, last summer, and fortunately or unfortunately, we never had sufficient beach traffic conditions to actually test to see what the deeply embedded in the routine right turn prohibitions actually did or how things adapted. And so I'm hoping that we'll have that opportunity to figure it out. But I'd be inter interested to know from staff, I mean, at this point, how much additional effort until we actually get beach traffic back and can test out what was attempted last year, how much work is being done on beach traffic? I'm going to ask uh, Director Morley to weigh in on that. Thank you, Matt. Hello again. Um, yeah, so uh, you're right. We had the reprieve from beach traffic this summer, so we didn't get to experience any anything for any of the adjustments we've made in the past. Um, you know that we're making adjustments now on Highway 9. Hopefully that will have some impact as well. We're also in our ongoing discussions with uh, advancing a, a, a Highway 9, 17 interchange and 17 efficiencies project with VTA and Caltrans, all of those things are targeted towards uh, towards beach traffic, some of them shorter term, some of them longer term. Um, but we we are we are very much still in a, in a phase of uh, try new things for beach traffic uh, and evaluate how they're working and then regroup and, and adjust on the as, as we go. Um, Council Member Risto again, uh, continuation and then Council Member Hudas. Okay, that, th thank you, um, Director Morley. That did remind me, yes, of course, we have long-term items in there. So yeah, the beach traffic needs to stay on there. I mean, it's all part of just traffic control. It doesn't have to do with the beach. It could be a mudslide. It could be um, a crash on 17. It could be anything that impacts our town. So thank you. And then Council Member Hudas. Uh, yeah, I wanted to just uh, make sure we don't take the beach traffic uh, gridlock situation off um it's on the list i think it needs to be on there and and one of the reasons i think it's so important is that if that happens coincident with a wildfire it it just uh magnifies and and multiplies the effects of the disaster so it it is very much linked to safety as well it's not just a convenience item but the fact that these things tend to happen with the same uh, weather and climate conditions and that they tend to happen in the same place, the parts of town that are up against the hillside uh, with narrow streets is uh, just, uh, just really makes it um, a safety element as well. So we have to keep working on it. We have to keep focused on it. And thank goodness uh, we didn't have very much of that this last year. And Mayor, I'm going to ask the Chief if he'd like to give a brief update on where we are with the parking coordinator position, given all the questions around this topic. That'd be great. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and, and uh, Council Members. Thank you. Pete DeSena, Chief of Police. So uh, although the, uh, uh, the rollout of the parking plan is really a, a, a joint effort between ourselves, economic vitality, and uh, PPW. The parking coordinator, the part-time parking coordinator is actually hired through the police department as in the process of studying the plan and rolling it out. And as uh, Council Member uh, Hughes, I believe, mentioned, our focus has been on the employee parking 
as well as the wayfinding. So we are, uh, the parking coordinator is going to be doing a presentation to uh, Monica Wren and um, myself and uh, Matt Morley next week uh, in preparation for a presentation to the Complete Streets and Traffic, uh, uh, Complete Streets and Transportation Committee, I, I believe, early in February. And then at their behest, we'll be uh, making a presentation to council. So it is in process. Uh, he's making good progress. We're lucky to get uh, uh, parking coordinator is very uh, immersed, uh, very uh, very savvy when it comes to parking, and I think we'll have some uh, uh, good information for you coming up. Thank you. Any other questions uh, with regard to traffic transportation? Questions, comments? And it sounds like, again, we have consensus in that area. Okay, and so now prudent financial management. I know Vice Mayor had already shared his thoughts. Is there anything else you'd like to elaborate on, Vice Mayor? Um, you mentioned substituting uh, discretionary payments with increased resources. Yeah, um, I'll just, I don't know, to remind people what I said is we really put this on there when we had um, surpluses year after year to try to attack what was you know a looming future problem and we we attacked it i think as much as we can and i don't see any more re, you know, any more surpluses coming anytime soon um, what we do need to do is look for um, surpluses so that we can take care of future capital project needs we have you know if we have no surpluses then we have no what I like to call um, discretionary capital projects. We only have money that come in for dedicated sources, like you know, money that comes in that has to be used for storm drains, or money that comes in that has to be used for streets. And, um, and that's that's good that we have money that comes in for streets, but we don't have enough to keep our street index from falling. So I I feel strongly that we should have something on here that says we're going to spend a bunch of effort to figure out what our new revenue sources are um, to, to be able to, to fund our future capital projects. Um, and, you know, again, I like taking stuff off that we're really not going to think about for a while. So that's why I'm suggesting taking something actually off and, and putting these other words in. Vice Mayor, um, other council members. So. Council Member Hudis. Um, yeah, so so I think you know none of these services happen without the finances um, to provide them, and so I and given the situation we're in, I agree that identifying uh, new revenue sources and ways to enhance existing revenue sources is a higher priority right now than uh, the. Uh, th than the OPEB, additional OPEB payments. However, um, I, 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 I think that it's prudent to take a long-term view on this and to ask our new finance commission uh, to think about this potentially with the idea that we look at a long-term solution to working down the OPEB by creating goals over some period of time that would enhance our financial position. And that doesn't mean that we would have to lockstep reduce by a certain percentage every year, but rather have a goal over, say, a five-year period or a seven-year period to make some progress in that area, because otherwise we just won't have uh, the funds. Everything will be eaten up by our OPEB. And so I think that the Finance Commission uh, can take a, a look at how to make this um, more of a long term thing, even if it isn't a 2021 thing. Um, but to the town, I really think needs to commit to uh, goals that we reach that potentially uh, we ignore one year or we even go the other way one year, but we. Uh, but we, over time, have to deal with this problem. And, and I think the you, Finance Commission is the ideal group to, to work on this. And Mr. Andrews, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, so the, the Finance 
committee did take one long term step already to try and get to exactly what the council member is stating. And part of the general fund uh, policy now for this council is moving from a 30 year amortization period, which CalPERS currently does to the town saying we want it to be a 20 year amortization period. We basically shaved 10 years off those payments with significant interest savings. And the way we did that is every year when the finance department calculates remaining fund balance and then comes to the council saying these are the fund transactions you need to make as you adopt your budget. One of them is a $390,000 payment annually, which is what the actuaries calculated would be about the cost to get from a 30 year amortization to a 20 year amortization. And so there are one or two long term kind of strategies in place currently. And I think uh, the Finance Commission would be a great place to see if they can identify any additional long term mitigation strategies. Thank you. And then Council Member Risto, I saw your hand in the back to Vice Mayor. Uh, yes, yeah. so I agree that um, under prudent financial management, looking for additional revenue sources is a good addition. What I'm curious about is, you know, do we actually have to take off anything about the pension and OPEB obligations? I mean, it says additional discretionary payments, or do we just take that bullet point out from under it and just have that, you know, we are addressing, we, we need to keep a priority to address um, you know, the pension and OPEB obligations. I would not want to take that off. This is a two-year goal. Um, council member, any other comments on that? So, yeah. Vice Mayor. Um, I wanted to request, um, we have in two days, I, it looks like on my phone, um, a, a discussion with the finance committee, our council and finance committee together um, the, th the thing that I want us to keep remembering is our um, additional payments that are required go up in a, and they peak at some point and they go back down. And I really like that, that curve because what we're really worried about is in the future getting to a point where those additional payments are putting a lot of pressure on our budget. That's why we want to, to pull, pull that down. And we've made some payments and I'm wondering if we have the data to show what a, the new curve looks like. We got one several years ago and we've made a bunch of payments since then. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to see what does that curve look like now? I realize it may not be time in, in two days, but I, I would be curious if we're gonna look at that again. And, and I can speak to that. Thank you for the question, Vice Mayor. Uh, Respecting the fact that the new finance committee, the commission will pick a chair and the chair will be responsible for setting the agenda. When we come together on Thursday, staff has some thoughts just based on where we are in our current budget cycle and other processes of what an agenda would probably need to look like for the next three months for that commission. And so staff is tentatively thinking that we're bringing Bartell in for the March meeting to do exactly that. They're gonna provide an update of what the curve, as you describe it, looks like given the fact that we have made two significant ADPs. And so we intend to have that report ready. The commission can decide to have them come in March or not, but we're planning to have that updated report ready for March. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, council. So what I'm hearing, and, and I'll try and summarize based on what I've heard, and Mr. Andrews, please, with your own notes, tell me if I'm in error, as well as the other council members. So what I'm hearing is that for the ongoing priorities, there's still con uh, agreement that safety, quality of life, traffic, transportation, and prudent financial management uh, remain. Under safety, I heard an emphasis on fire protection, specifically on the five recommendations under the ad hoc committee. And we will be asking staff to come back and, and in, in their work plan and in the budget, share with us how that could be implemented. Under quality of life, I heard consensus that uh, uh, senior services as well as D, uh, diversity, inclusive community efforts be included in that, and that we're looking at staff to to, to come back with suggestions on how to incorporate that into our existing work and department work plans. Traffic transportation, I heard emphasis on the comprehensive parking study, the Dixon report that, um, that has become quite famous now. I think she should be thrilled that we constantly refer to it. 
And under prudent financial management, the only um, addition is to identify I, or enhance revenue, additional revenue sources, understanding that additional discretionary payments, that's an ongoing discussion. But given that um, our budget issues, that may not necessarily be as high a priority as seeking additional revenue. Um, and my only, my only correction, Mayor, would be, I think folks want to keep address pension and OPEB obligations as a primary bullet, remove the reference to ADP, and then add a new primary bullet of find and enhance new revenue sources Perfect. or enhance existing revenue sources. Okay, thank you. And I see Council Member Hudas. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, I feel that taking um, a, a sub bullet uh, or a bullet about, about uh, pension liability is, wouldn't, wouldn't be appropriate. So um, I'm just trying to understand, it seems like for every uh, italicized heading there is at least one bullet um, there and and so I would be very uncomfortable if we didn't have something that said we were continuing to address our uh, our uh, OPEB obligations pension and OPEB obligations and even if we weren't making um, specifically saying we're going to make a, a an ADP in 2021, since this is two year, I think it's very important that we keep that on there um, in some form. Okay. Other comments? And I look to both um, to, to Laurel as well as Arn, given the discussion of increased revenue is a high priority given our current financial situation, um, given the pandemic, and then addressing the fact that OPEB obligations is always going to be a concern. Can you uh, can you basically format it when it comes back so that it, it carries the conversation and the intent of what we had discussed? Absolutely, yes. And, you know, really, as uh, Assistant Manager Andrews mentioned, you know, this is something that has ta uh, taken a fair amount of the Council's time as well as the OPEB oversight uh, committee and we expect because of um, our policies our reserve policies acknowledging this issue it will continue to be something that does need to be addressed through our budgeting process so even if there's not a sub bullet it is still something that will have um, the staff and the administration's attention Given the summary of the consensus that I received, um, uh, I'm looking to Laurel. Would it be helpful to have a motion on that? I think you you did a great job summarizing the comments. Um, I, I was listening while I was off camera and um, just a, a fabulous summary of the communications. And I, I think we can just simply say, if someone would just move what you just said, I think that would be sufficient. Thank you. Okay, I see Council Member Badami. I move to approve uh, Mayor Sayak's comments in regards to the priorities. <laughs> Thank you. And then I saw um, a second, please. Council Member Hedis. I second that. Okay, let's uh, let's call the motion. Council Member Risto. Aye. Vice Mayor. Aye. Council Member Badami. Aye. Council Member Hedis. Aye. And I also vote aye, and it passes unanimously. Um, council members, I need to take a break. Um, and then when we return, if we can, we will be looking at the town attorney's uh, list of ordinances and going through that next. So if we can take five minutes, well, six minutes, and be back at 9.50. Thank you.
Um, Mr. Att uh, Mr. Attorney, Mr. Schultz. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, about four or five years ago, I started instituting this process for the Council during their priorities and goal setting. It really provides a roadmap, not only for my office, but the rest of the staff and kind of organizes us into what our major ordinances are that we will see uh, hopefully during the year to get done. Obviously it can change with priorities and things might come up during the year, but at least it kind of gets us focused on what we are trying to accomplish during the year. I'm gonna very quickly go through them and kind of highlight where I want, I think we need to have a little bit of discussion on, but I'm not gonna go into very long depth due to the time and also we don't want our electric electricity to go out during the middle of it. The first one is the face covering ordinance. This just came up last week at, at, at your meeting. Um, and we can do that if you'd like to, it'd be an urgency ordinance. It's number one on the list because if you're gonna really do it, you know, you, we better, you better do it pretty quick. Um, from a staff level, we don't think it's necessary. You, you, you've authorized the signs. We can still enforce this from a Santa Clara standpoint. We think it's just more of a signage issue and getting more education out there. But if council doesn't want it, we can bring that back in February and, and do it as an urgency ordinance. It, it wouldn't take that much time. It's just whether you want to do it or you're satisfied with the signage. So we'd like some way in on whether you want to keep that on the list or remove it. The public arts ordinance is completely done. It's ready to come to council. The delay has been as, as the previous mayor, and I believe this mayor is concerned with authorizing um, fees at this point in time with the pandemic uh, underway, and we just have not raised any fees. My position is, is since it's done, and, and there's been so much work put in it that we should bring it forward to you. You can approve it, but you could put a start date whenever you'd like it could be at the end of the year it could be next year whatever but at least it's on the books the development community knows it's coming and when you want it um the next one is amendments to a tree ordinance protection ordinance this is just cleaning up some language with regards to fines and penalties so we have a, a better ability to find those that do illegal trimming or tree removal number four is a gender neutralization of the town code this is just taking all the she's and he's and neutralizing them uh, for equality purposes. Um, and that's being actually done by outside. So there's very little time on, on our uni, uni code that kind of does our whole code and updates it when we, when we do our ordinances, they'll be helping us with that. Number five is the amendments to the solid waste ordinance. This is a mandate for the state. So we're gonna have to bring that forward to, we don't have a choice uh, in order to meet the requirements set forth in the, the bills that have been passed. Same with number six was the campaign financing reporting ordinance another state mandate that we need to look at to decide whether we want to follow state law or provide our own limits on finance contributions. Number seven is the other one I really want you to weigh in on here. Uh, it has to do kind of with ideas on raising revenues. It has to do with commercial cannabis operations and facilities ordinance, which would allow um, the cannabis facilities in town. It, it could be very controversial issue. Um, it's not something that's going to take just overnight. This would be probably a two year work plan because there need to be go to the policy committee, go to workshops, provide community outreach to see what the community feels. And if there is, uh, you know, a, a community sense that it's needed or wanted, then we could figure out, you know, where it would be allowed, how many would be allowed. So it's, it's a very long process and it would really communicate typically and probably November of 2022, because that's when you'd put your tax measure on to be able to tax these businesses. Um, and so it's a very long process. I'm not asking for your, you know, whether you'd be really forward against it, unless you're gonna, you would vote no on it, no matter what, regardless of what the community says, because of your personal beliefs. Um, and if that's the case the council wants to, then completely understand that. Um, and, and, and I would mention there was a comment about the federal versus state law. That is certainly one of the issues that you'd have to consider as you went through the process. I would say though, the House of Representatives in December uh, passed a bill to um, declassify uh, marijuana as a, a substance that is illegal. And it goes to the Senate probably at the beginning of this year. I'm not sure if that bill will pass under its current form, but I certainly believe with 33 states now having legalized marijuana in one form or another that we will see uh, soon. So it, it, it's basically on there as a revenue gen generator. Uh, we've never really had any discussions within this town about 
uh, marijuana, and uh, I believe it passed uh, in the town of Los Gatos. Sixty-four uh, percent of the citizens voted to uh, legalize marijuana uh, for the state. Um, but certainly, also understand because of the workload and everything else. If you want to pass on that, don't want to keep it on the list. Uh, number eight is left over from last year, and I really do want to get to it this year. Is the public nuisance blight administrative abatement hearing ordinances? It's really a revamp of our entire section um, that will allow us more tools for us to uh, deal with blight, to deal with public nuisance issues in, a, in an administrative hearing that would, you know, uh, streamline and, and allow us to be able to enforce our codes much more efficiently than we currently are. Uh, number nine is left over uh, from last year. It's a Meals Act ordinance. You can have, you can let us know whether you want to keep that on there or remove it. Um, we still will probably have conflicts and probably only have three that were, are, are going to hear that item. So it does make it very difficult. Any ordinance would have to pass by all three, not a two to one vote, but three zero in order to implement the Mills Act. Um, so that again, do you, do, you, do you want to keep it on the list or not? Uh, and the rest are uh, kind of go down the line. You know, we do have to make amendments to our sign ordinance. It might not get done this year, but we do need to before our next, next election to make sure we're in compliance with new uh, Supreme Court cases regarding political signs and other signs and what we can and can't regulate. Uh, 11 shared mobility was much higher and, and I've actually started that, but then we hit COVID. It's not you know, really big on the radar right now because that's just not happening, but sooner or later, we're gonna have to deal with shared mobility device ordinance and, and how we wanna, if we wanna regulate it or we wanna prohibit it. Uh, our noise ordinance, wireless facility ordinance, and claim settlement ordinance, the last three are all also left over that sooner or later we're going to have to get to in, in revamp a, a, as we move forward. But I'm, I'm not sure we would get to them this year, but they're always good to keep on the list. In fact, I don't think I've taken anything off the list unless it's been done for the past four years. And with that, I'll turn it back to you. The ones really that would need, we need some clarification. And again, you could change the order, but would be the, the face covering ordinance. Um, whether you want the public arts ordinance to come forward and then the cannabis ordinance. And with that, I'll turn it back to the mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, thank you for that. And thank you for the clarification on public art ordinance that you can actually put a start date that's post pandemic. So I appreciate that information. Vice mayor. On the, on the, the face covering question, um, I was under the impression that the you know, we basically are using the county's ordinance on face coverings, um, and I thought we could impose fines based on that. You mentioned, I thought I heard you saying we needed this to be able to impose fines. Is no, that we no, that's no, we 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 can we can use the Santa Clara and and we can issue fines if necessary um, using the, the Santa Clara. Most of the cities, I think there's about 20, 25 in California that have done it. I've done it primarily for symbolic reasons, um, just to even get the educational level out there even further and to cite the muni code section. One thing you would get, you would get that fine money. If you if you cite in the Santa Clara County ordinance, then the county is going to get that fine money. I don't think it's going to be a big money generator, but I just point that out. That's the difference. But no, we don't, we don't need one to enforce the sign ordinance and our signs that are being prepared that you gave authorization last week at the bottom of them, they'll cite the Santa Clara code um, unless we can move real quick and then add ours on there um, also. And maybe the, 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 the second question is, is sort of a higher level question. I look at I look at the long list and, you know, I get to about eight and I say, well, that that's good enough. Um, and then the question really becomes, can can the town attorney's office do less of this and and have the skill sets to add value helping with many of the other priorities you helped um or you heard you heard discussed tonight um you know again this is my my thought of you know what do we not do to help uh, um, some of these priorities and i'd say you know cut the last six or seven off of the list if you think you can help come up with more revenue sources or help with any of the other things that um, have 
have talked, uh, we, we were talking about tonight. Can't, I can't speak anymore. <laughs> do, you, do you have a thought? And, and certainly I'll, I'll be helping out on all of those. And, and I, I completely agree with you. There's, there's no way even in, in not doing all the other things I do, uh, getting to all 14 of them. I put them on there just as, you know, and then hopefully next year they'll get up a little bit higher and a little bit higher. Um, last year we started to do the shared mobility and we didn't quite get to that, but I haven't raised that to the level only because of the situation we're in. But certainly if you gave me the cutoff and where we'll get, uh, we'll get to the six. Um, I, you know, those are the ones, the top six that I think we should, are, are doable with, and doing all the other things that you mentioned. Uh, getting further than that is going to be difficult. You know, we can start that process. You know, the thing I'm worried about the cannabis and, and at least looking at that issue is if we sat here next year and you said, well, let's let's look at that. I would tell you, okay, you have 2024 because you're not gonna be able to get all the community outreach and get that on the election for the tax measure in 2022. So you really start have to start thinking about not only this revenue source, but all the other ones, you know, this this before you know the end of the year or hopefully earlier on in this year. Okay. So uh, hold on, um, Vice Mayor. Let's see, Laurel. Did you want to add on to that? I, I just wanted to remind the council that um, our town attorney is such an integral part of our town team that whether it's economic recovery, dealing with the general plan update, our parking study so many of these strategic priorities have his fingerprints and his input um, so while we're prioritizing ordinances i do want to just assure you that that rob is a great contributor um, as we move forward with these priorities thank you council member badami and then risto with all due respect to our town attorney um, I'm going to put number seven at the bottom of the list. I'm sorry, um, my fellow council members may not agree with me. I think I have a desk item for Mr. Fago, and I think he might agree with me, but that's my, uh, my input on number seven, which is probably controversial. And then council member Risto, and then council member Hughes. Okay, um, so first of all, I would say for the face covering ordinance, since we don't need one, and at least from my perspective, what I would be looking for mostly is education and compliance. There's already a state and a county ordinance. I think we should just move forward with the signage and not spend time writing our own ordinance. Um, this should not be something that we're trying to make money on, and we won't anyway. I mean, you know, whatever we charge people, the effort to do the enforcement, the education is going to outcost that so you know this is we're doing this for health um if i may madam mayor can i just go through a couple of them okay um so the public art ordinance yeah i mean we have the draft i think we should just move forward with that right away and we can have the discussion on the implementation date um the amendments to the tree protection ordinance i think is really important um for a variety of reasons but especially because as we are going to be moving forward to remove nuisance trees for fire protection, we really want to make sure, or prevention, we want to make sure that we're protecting the trees that we're keeping in place. And I've seen some really horrible hatchet jobs walking around. So I think we want to make sure that we are preserving what really is an integral part of our town identity as a tree community. Um, the solid waste, okay, some of these are required. Oh, the the cannabis operation, I actually think we should pursue that. That is, you know, it is legal in California. I know people from young to old that use cannabis, um, just like other people have a cocktail. There's been an evolution of belief in this community. When I first moved here, very few places had liquor licenses, beer and wine was it. There's been this evolution of how cocktails are more what people want and so there's been a change in what restaurants serve um, as a full service community if i think about how many people i know that use a variety of cannabis ingredient or um, items we have leakage you know 
I am not saying that we should have cannabis operations in town, but I think we should consider it and we should be able to put it before the voters. And if we don't start now, we won't have that opportunity. Um, I think federal law will be changing along with it. And I, I think we just need to move forward on that and see where it takes us. The only other one I had a concern about was the Mills Act only because as you pointed out, four out of five of us I think are conflicted and we'll have the same scenario we had last time. And I believe that um, former council member Marsha Jensen had pointed out she wanted to see it come forward at a time where there wasn't a town council that was conflicted. And so at least for the next two years, we really aren't going to be able to hear it as a full body. Um, so I would put that one off. Otherwise, everything else looks good. And obviously, there's a bunch that we have to do just because they're legally required. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Hudis. Uh, thanks. Uh, first, starting with the face covering um, question, if we were to, uh, by the way, I think that it's important that that we get much better compliance uh, for, for a lot of reasons. And I'm um, happy that the that last week, the uh, the town approved um, better signage, but now we're sort of at the point of well, what goes on that sign? And so, you know, I think we need to be very clear that if you don't wear a mask, you're going to have a fine. So it needs to say something like fine. So the question for the town attorney is, can we put a fine uh, onto the sign if we don't have an ordinance? Yes, you can. Okay. So, and I agree that I don't think uh, that enforcement should be a priority in terms of, um, I'll say that differently. Enforcement should be a priority. I think we will get enforcement to a large degree through uh, signage, but we do need to have the ability to write a citation or citations to a group if uh, there is uh, you know, certain things continue like um, they have in the past. So with that assurance, I'm okay with not doing a town ordinance as long as uh, we can make progress on signs that are very clear that state uh, that there's a fine. Um, with regard to uh, public art, uh, yes. Uh, we should do that. I would propose August 1, 2021 um, as a uh, start date to start collecting those fees. Those fees won't be coming from, uh, to a large degree, I don't think they'll be coming from the, the smallest of businesses. So I think it's possible to uh, put that in. Uh, tree protection ordinance, absolutely. Um, there was an atrocious uh, case of... Uh, in the hillsides of uh, trees that were taken down. And I believe that this ordinance needs to address that with, um, with fines and penalties that will have an impact. Uh, the next one I wanna jump to is five, the solid waste ordinance. If we are required to do it by law, then we, we must prioritize that. Um, my question on number six, is do we need to do this or should the council have a discussion about whether the state limits are okay for the town, in which case we don't need to do work on an ordinance. I think that that would simply be a discussion point. Yeah, that's, um, cor that's correct. We would, we, we would bring it first back as a discussion bring you back the entire law and, and the ranges and maybe what other cities are doing is benchmarking. And then if you decide you want a, a different one than the defaulting to the state, then I would write up the ordinance. Okay, great. And seven is, a, I think, even a more extreme case of the same thing, which is that I think starting with the ordinance is frankly the tail wagging the dog. I think that from a public uh policy, we need to do more community outreach as to where the community stands on this uh, topic. And 
the ideas that they would like to see implemented in the town um, in, in terms of the way serv this service might be provided. But I think it, uh, for me, it would not be a, a legal and ordinance priority. It would be uh, a, a public policy outreach uh, step first, a big one. Um, and, I, and, I, and I agree with that. There would be workshops, policy committee, workshops, community engagement before you'd even get to that issue of whether you want to have an ordinance or not. Okay. And then just scanning the rest of the list, a uh, question on the political sign is that it sounds like we may have some exposure if we don't do something about that one. Is that correct? You're on mute, Rob. It, it's possible that we could have exposure in that area uh, if someone challenged our sign ordinance. Okay. So I'd um, like to have that completed, you know, before our next election or before right. we get so into the, the election season. So by the end of the year. Okay. So that, that, if, if that's something that we need to do, or again, um, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like we there may be a need to do that. Uh, the only other one on the list that I would again suggest that we uh, consider is the Mills Act. Uh, I read carefully the transcript. I believe we do have a legislative solution uh, where a quorum can be formed to address this. I don't know that putting it off with the hope that we might have different council members who might live somewhere else. Uh, I, I don't think that's addressing it. The specifically in that last hearing, um, it was a continuance with a direction for staff to do some work um, to get some more information. It was not to draft an ordinance. So uh, I, again, I would like to see us uh, follow the directions of that continuance and do the research um, and look at the financial impact uh, and some of the other questions that were raised about implementing the ordinance um, bef before we start uh, again getting into ordinance specifics, but really follow the direction and, and uh, that that hearing was continued but it wasn't continued to a date certain, so it was essentially tabled. Um, I think that we owe it to our community to uh, to have that hearing with that information fulfilled and then see where it goes from there. Vice Mayor? Um, I don't need to repeat. I'll just say everything Maria said, I agree with, and I'll add that I also have requested that the town manager add the fine onto the sign. I think that's a good idea. Councilmember Badami. I would also like to say that I agree for the most part with the order um, outside of my comments about number seven, but I also would like to see the Mills Act um, pursued as well. Along the comments provided by Commissioner or Councilmember Hudis. Um, and so that leaves for myself. I think we're in agreement and I'm hearing consensus. There's no need for a, a number one face covering ordinance. So. Uh, and so I'm in agreement with that. I think public art, let's bring it back. We can agendize that and we'll look to a date. Um, I think I heard August 1st. Um, and with regard to the sign ordinance, I do think the fact that there is exposure, I'd like to move that up. I'm open to having uh, preliminary conversations on the cannabis. Just, um, I have no strong feelings and I'd be curious to know what our community is thinking. Um, and I have to just to state on the record again, my, I am very uncomfortable having to, um, even though there's legislation allowing people to vote on this, I feel very uncomfortable having been one of the ones that had to draw a straw of ruling on something that may be perceived to having a conflict of interest. And um, it's regardless of what you do, there is someone that will always think you're making a decision based on your financial gain that you can receive from it. And I am extremely uncomfortable hearing it, knowing that I have a strong financial conflict of interest on this. So I prefer not to be involved in it. And for that reason, I would like to see it moved down the list and postponed. 
Um, so those are my comments. So it sounds like we have consensus with number one. I can't tell if we, where we are at number seven. And so I'm going to look to all of you to try and craft a motion based on that. <laughs> Would anyone like to try a motion? Council Member Risto. Oh, yes, Rob first. I, I was going to try to at least kind of summarize where I was going to probably head with, with going with it. So, yeah, please do. You know, so, what one would come off, um, and then two, three, four, five, six would all stay the same. I think there is support to move the sign ordinance up all the way to which would now be six in front of even the cannabis one to get a move on the sign ordinance. And uh, I see that I, I wanna keep Mills Act on there. It's still an item that sooner or later, but I would move that to the bottom of the list based on, on, on three of the uh, council members wanting to remove it completely. I would probably just move it to the very bottom, which means we would probably get to it this year and we'd look at it again next year. That's that's kind of what I heard. If there was anything else different than that, you know, then then that could be formulated into the motion. Council Member Risto. Okay. Well, this may not be the most elegant phrasing then, but I will move that um, we adopt the um, the order of the ordinances the uh, for work um, with all of the um, changes that were just stated by the town attorney with the removal of the face covering ordinance, um, the change of order where the Mills Act is moved to the bottom. I believe the sign ordinance was moved up one or two levels. To number six. To number six. And I think that was all of the changes. So the only one that would come off would be the face covering and then there were some order changes. So that is my motion. Second. Okay. Any questions or clarifications on the motion? Yes. Council member Badami. So I just need clarification on where number seven stands, the, the cannabis. And uh, the maker of the motion. Uh, I believe that would move to, well, actually it, wouldn't it, actually move it stays, to it stays seven. Because the face came off and the other one. Because the face came out and the, and the sign ordinance will come in front of it. So it would stay at number seven. Okay, thank you. And, and again, I will reiterate what Council Member Huda said. Although we call this our ordinance report, um, as, as he mentioned, there's three or four on here that are, are, won't come as just straight ordinances. They're going to come through study sessions or other workshops and other community outreach. Um, and that would even include the Mills Act if it came, if we got to it, but it would be putting that at the end of the list, we won't get to it by the end of this year. Council Member Hudas. So for the maker of the motion, um, with regard to number seven, does the term, is the term ordinance reflected in the motion? Um, what I'm reflecting in the motion is that as the um, town attorney brought forth this list, it's not that we're saying that we're gonna make an ordinance on all of these. We're going to move forward with the process and the process in each of these as they're worked on will require different amounts of study or coming back to the council. Um, this is kind of a, a workflow as I'm viewing it, not that I'm approving that an ordinance be created for each of these. So to be clear, my motion is to move forward on this work program with the requisite steps for public outreach and coming back to the council. And uh, Vice Mayor, is that your understanding as the seconder? Yes. Okay, Council Member um, Hudis, any further questions? Um, I'm comfortable with that as long as the first step on number seven is uh, a, a, a serious concerted community outreach effort that precedes any work on an ordinance. Okay. And I'm seeing it would, it, it, it would, as, as I mentioned, and I think that you did too, it would probably come back first as a first orientation report, even to give you a timeline and what our outreach would be and see and get buy in on that at an issue first and provide right. some of the main issues, providing a full staff report and even checking in. So 
Yeah. And, and I'm saying that not because I oppose it, but because I really don't know where the community stands on this. And I wouldn't want it sort of shoehorned in uh, without getting a full assessment from where the community stands. Completely agree. Any other further questions on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Councilmember Badami? Aye. Councilmember Hudis? Aye. Councilmember Risto? Aye. Vice Mayor? Aye. And I also vote aye, and the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, everyone. We did a great amount of work tonight. Thank you for bearing with us. It's 1021, and the meeting's now adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Good night.